Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the stream. Sorry, I'm a little bit late, but, you know, better late than never, they always say, right? Uh, so today, we got a really special presentation. I got four TVs, but the main focus of this is going to be S95D G4. And we will do tons of tests, right? We'll go ahead and put different lights on. I'll open my curtains. Uh, open my blinds. We'll do all of that. So today I'm just going to just run down pretty much basic things. If I can get to gaming a little bit later, I will get to gaming. If not, I do apologize. So I know it'll take a bit for some people to roll in here, so I won't test uh, reflections right away. We want to start off with a dark room viewing scenario because there's going to be a lot of people who buy these TVs for that as they are OLED TVs and I think that OLED TVs are best in a dark room. So starting off with a dark room, I'm liking all of these TVs. Um, you can't go wrong with any of these TVs. And so to start off, which TVs are which, let me go ahead and lead you into that. So if you want to go ahead and guess, go for it. I'll just let you know what TVs I'm using. I'm not going to tell you where they're at. So one of the TVs in the mix, of course, I told you is the S95D. We have the S90D, and we also have the G4. Then we also have the Sony A80L. And full disclaimer, uh, full transparency, I did get the A80L gifted to me by Sony. Um, so that is the TV that I'm using in this demonstration as well. So just putting that out there for everybody to, uh, to know and understand. I'll fix the camera. It seems to be a little bit blurry on some scenes. I will fix that. Don't worry. One second. I think I got it. Hopefully that's a little bit better for you guys. How's everybody doing today? Just saying what's up to everybody in the chat. We've got Classy in the house. We've got Leo in the house. We've got Iceman and Bob Tech. What's up? Flying PJ. David. Let me know how my audio is. Um, yeah. So if there's anything particular you guys want to see, you know, one of the best ways to just kind of reach out to me is going to be Super Chat. Um, that's always going to be the most appreciative met method. Uh, but of course I will try to answer all the questions that I can. If I cannot, uh, I do apologize and just feel free to ask again. Um, but this is going to be a very busy stream for me. I'm going to be moving around. Um, I'll try to interact with chat as much as possible, but it's definitely going to be difficult as I am running this solo. So hopefully you guys understand that. Uh, and we'll get back to the face cam streams, you know, once all the TV comparison season kind of winds down a little bit. I was thinking about even doing two streams a week. Uh, I just don't know if uh, that would be too much streams for you guys. But I really do want to have input on all the other things that are going on in the TV world. So we're just running through some basic LG demos right now. Which one do you think looks the best here? Um... I mean, positioning, if you've, you've been paying attention, it's, you're, you're probably aware of which is which, but yeah. Uh, biggest question I get is, can you tell uh, the coding, can you tell that the coding like, takes away from the TV picture quality at all? I'd say no. Like from a dark viewing view room situation, if you have a dark room like this, not even entirely dark, just, you know, you can control the light. I cannot tell you that this is a different screen coding on the S95D. It doesn't look any different to me from this distance. If you were closer to the TV, like say using it as a monitor, it starts to be more apparent that it is using a different coding. But from this distance, you don't really notice it. So if that's been holding you off on buying it for a dark room, I would say don't worry about it because there's really no difference between uh, the way this looks clarity-wise and the S90D. 
you may notice the G4 is a little bit clearer, a little bit sharper at times. I still haven't put my finger on to why this is, um, but the G4 does stick out as being the one with more depth, more clarity. Again, I've been trying to figure it out, uh, but I can't. So uh, I guess we'll find out, right? Uh, sorry, I went blocking the TVs with the comment. Again, I'm, I'm running this as a one-man show. So I do appreciate you guys' patience with all of that. I'll reveal the TVs in just a second. I'll give you a little bit more time to guess. A lot of people are saying bottom left is G4. Bottom left is G4. Uh, since we've got that figured out, uh, let me go ahead and run through settings for you guys. So I've in filmmaker mode. Um, let's see. Dynamic tone mapping is off. And I'm going to start off in filmmaker mode just because this is going to be the best way to do apples versus apples comparisons. I'll try different modes, of course, as the stream goes on, but we're starting off in filmmaker mode and custom on the Sony. I'll also go through the, the professional mode toggle and see how that changes tone mapping a little bit as well. But uh, as you can see, these are the settings here. You go through my clarity settings. All of this is default filmmaker mode. Um, and just to kind of show you guys when you reset filmmaker mode, um, right now it does seem to turn off the dynamic tone mapping. So that's good. Uh, let's, uh, let's see what else we got. Um, oh yeah. Question of, do I see any kind of blooming on the S95 D? I know people were asking me that question. Uh, yeah, you don't really see blooming on it or anything like that. Um, I don't personally, not from this distance. Maybe if I'm a little bit closer, maybe you see the light reflecting onto the screen coating itself. Okay, and then people are guessing the top left is the S95D. With a remote. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, I'll got to put this screen up real quick. One sec. I will be right back. All right, sorry about that. I had to get the remotes. They were in front of the screen. Didn't want to walk in front of the screen. Okay. Um, yep, so the Samsung S95D is the top left. A lot of people guessed that. And uh, just to go through the settings again for you guys, I am in filmmaker mode with the default settings. Everything defaults. Okay, um, so S90D is bottom right. Okay, and I'll go through the settings here. Should be in filmmaker mode, but let's double check. Yep, filmmaker mode. Go through the expert settings. You can see all default values. Sony should be in custom, although it may not be. Okay, so Sony is the top right, AADL. And I'll go ahead and mark them. Give me one second.
do it like this. And like I said, I'll try to answer as much as I can, but um, I do have some kind of like demonstrations to show you in a second. Uh, why is this not working? I mean, I'll, I'll move it one sec. And then the S ninety D, right? The S ninety five D. I don't know if you guys caught the uh, pictures that I posted in the community tab earlier. That was like when I opened the blinds yesterday when I first got the TVs. Um, when I first got the S ninety five D in, I was testing it out and stuff. Pretty pleased with the results. Um. First impressions on it is like in my viewing situation in my room, it looks much better than it looked at the uh than it looked at the Samsung facility. Like the room that was at the Samsung facility, for example, when the lights were on, that was more of a room that was sort of challenging. I mean, I can make this a challenging room, but of course, when you can control light, you can have all these TVs look good. And that's kind of uh the main kind of thing I want to convey is that um, the S95D isn't losing anything from this coating, from this distance, with the lights off, things like that. So it was a, a big question that I got all the time. Do not put a 5,000 Kelvin light source on the S95D. Well, I have a way to control the light temperature on some of the lights I'll be using today, so I'll try that out and see if there's a, a difference that a light temperature makes on it. G4 looks like it has a little bit more pop, HDR pop, than the rest. Um... Yeah, I mean, that's kind of interesting. I, I guess I'll just put it over here. It does cover up the names, but it's better than covering up the TVs, I suppose. I At times, the G4 and the S95D are very comparable brightness-wise, uh, but the G4 does seem to be the more brighter, impactful TV overall, especially with whites. Like, this screen right here is much brighter when that QNED screen popped up there. Um, and let me actually, I hate this demo. Uh, let me go ahead and go back to that um, screen because it's something I kind of wanted to pause on. So like right when we bring the QNED screen up there. Also, those green flowers are just really popping. So, um, you know, when it, when it goes full screen, obviously, ABO kicks in on all of them to a certain degree. Um, but, like, still the brightest one amongst these is the, uh, the LG G4. Um, and then, like, even when the flowers are here, like, I'll just go ahead and pause it. Um, right here is a good example of just like striking luminance with the G4. Uh, the S95D is not too far behind though. Uh, definitely not too far behind in this. Um, and you know, surprisingly, like the A80L is keeping up with the S90D mostly. Uh, and um, one of the questions I got, oddly enough, was today I was getting a lot of questions, and I'm not sure why that I got a bunch of these questions today. But a bunch of people were saying that the S90D is brighter than the S95D and I should test it. 
Um, you know, I don't have a way to test the luminance. I don't have meters or anything like that. But just by eye, uh, the S95D is far brighter than the S90D in most scenes. So that's one thing I do want to convey to you guys. Like this, for example, is brighter on the S95D. It has more full screen luminance. It seems to have more HDR impact overall. Um, and yeah, so I guess like we're going to go to Spears and Munzel real quick. Give me one second. All right, so we are back on that. Um, I'm actually, instead of going to Spears and Munzel, we're gonna go back to YouTube, um, and then I'll do the light test. We'll do Spears and Munzel right before we do gaming because I'm gonna be using an Xbox and I would just like to have the source already switched, so. Mm, let's see, what, what should we play? Let's go to uh, this demo here. I've got a couple of them. Um... And um, yeah, just bear with me. It's going to be a lot of switching back and forth sometimes. And uh, yep. Hey, Modern Wise, what's up? Uh, how, exa how exhausted are you are making all these videos? So much work. You have no idea. I mean, you do have idea. <laughs> um, but I, I guess a lot of people don't have any idea how much work actually goes into all of this. Um, that's why I'm really grateful that everybody shows up and, and you know, has a lot of interactivity in the chat and it just makes it worth it when we do these live streams though because it's fun and yes it is a lot of work it's a lot of stress uh like doing the setup and finding ways to make sure that it's fair uh, but like yeah it's it is it's a ton of work so all the help is appreciated for sure And um, I see you, a lot of you guys have like specific questions on like which TV should I get. I'll get to that um, a little bit later in the stream, I promise. KG loves it. I, I do love it. It's a passion of mine to do this or else I wouldn't be doing it. Like, yes, I make money doing it, but it would not be something I do unless I was passionate about it. And that's something like if I can convey a message to you guys, like if you're struggling to find your place in life or you're struggling to find something that makes you feel like you belong a little bit more. Don't chase something that's just going to be a monetary gain. Like monetary gain is great, but just try to make sure there's your passion in it as well. Otherwise, it's going to be a very, very much so a struggle um, and you're never going to be happy. So you got to find something you love to do. Um, and that's something that if you can make money while you love doing it, that is the best thing that you can find. Honestly, it really is. Um, so if anybody's struggling, don't give up. Try to find what you're really passionate about and just like attack it.
Getty G Man says thanks for all the work in the community. Hey, I like I said, it's my pleasure. It's a lot of fun for me. Um, let me go through chat some more. I love these Sony demos, by the way. They're some of my favorite demos. I like the pinball one specifically is like a really cool one. And this one, this one really shows off color luminance um, quite a bit, honestly. Like, this is one of the things I really love. But this is also a stress test for mini LED TVs. A lot of the Sony dem demos are stress tests for like a mini LED, for example. I thought about having a mini LED TV in this mix, but yeah, it's kind of kind of hard to find a good one right now. A good one that is comparable to OLED, I should say. The Bravia 9 should change that. I don't think it's going to be like better or anything, but it'll be closer. Um, in terms of contrast, I'm saying. The G4 goodness, that, that depth. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I think I'm going crazy when I look at the G4. It's like, it just feels like it is having this 3D effect. And then I've said that kind of before, but I'll say it again. Like the depth is crazy on the G4. Um, and at times it, it's like the G4 can be so bright, so much brighter than the other scenes. Uh, that it's, it's like, it almost feels like the G4 is doing something it's not supposed to be doing. Uh, and that's just a feeling that I got in the back of my head. I don't know, like if it's manipulating luminance or what, um, but I don't think it is because in most scenes, like they look very similar. Like, like when it's darker scenes, for example, it doesn't look like it's trying to trick anything. It, it's just, I think the G4 is just natively sharp and really good. And that's kind of what Classy was saying to me is like, it's just really good sharpness. Uh, they're not doing too much over processing. They're, so, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting comparison for sure. But I mean, what do you guys think of the S95D for scenes like this? I, I, you know, I'm not seeing what was reported as like blooming, for example. Like you could stress test the heck out of this TV and you can make it look bad with lights. Like you really could. And I will do that in a second. Um, but if you got light control, <laughs> you could get a G4, you could get an S95D, you can get an S90D, you get an AADL. You would be happy with any of these TVs. You really would. Uh, we got a super chat from Lisa. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, she says, thank you so much for doing these live streams. We appreciate all the work involved. Thank you, Lisa. That is much appreciated. Thank you for the super chat. It's always great to see you in the chat. Um, it's just, you're just really involved with the community. I think it's really cool. You, you always bring life to the chat. So thank you. A lot of positive energy all the time. <laughs> the plasma guys still claim plasma is the best. It's kind of funny. Like a lot, I talk to a lot of people who say that, and then when they buy their TV, they come back to me. They're like, "Oh man, you were right. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking." <laughs> like, yeah, you. It's easy to think that, but like once you see one of these modern TVs, your minds will change for sure. Is there things plasma will do a little bit better? Sure. But um, as far as like the impact that you get from your TV. No, not even close. Thoughts on C4 versus G3? Well, I highly doubt the C4 is anywhere close to the G3, so uh, if there's close in price, just get the G3 and be done with it. Um, 
if you're worried about the gaming luminance uh, for color luminance, for example, they both have that problem. So, yeah, the C4 didn't fix that problem. Only the G4 fixed it. Those reds are keeping up with QD OLED. The problem's not the reds. It's really just like vibrant oranges and yellows, right? Yellow's always been a problematic color for W OLED, and you can see that still. Um, you know, I kind of showed it in my thumbnail, that volcano scene. You could see uh, the inner lava turning white a little bit on the thumbnail. I use that, for example, because that's going to be one of the things that separates the S95D as a strength from the G4. So if you're all about color luminance, the S95D is still the one to get. If you can control your light, and if you could control your room. And if you can't, I will give a case for the S95D where it is the absolute best in a sunroom. Like, it is by far the best TV you can get in a sunroom, the S95D is, and I fully believe that. Can't keep my eyes off the G4. Yep, it's a, it's a, like, it's, I can't even put my finger on it most of the time. And I think I'm going crazy because, um, I just keep going back to the fact, like, why is it so much clearer? Uh, and it's crazy. It actually does come across on, like, the camera, too. So, yeah, there's some sort of secret sauce going on. I know Classy says there's not, but I still believe there is. There's something going on behind the scenes. Um, yeah, because it really does kind of just stick out. The depth is just there more than the other TVs. And at first, you know, I thought maybe like once I get the S95D in, uh, we'll see a difference because the luminance and everything. But no, it's still like I will take the G4 sharpness and clarity over all of these TVs right now. Can you put them in vivid mode, please? I will. Um, just give me a little bit. We wanted to run through some basic stuff first. G4 clarity due to AI upscaling. If there's AI upscaling, it's being done behind the scenes. I don't have the AI Picture Pro on. I don't have any of the AI features on that are clicked on. Um, they're all turned off in filmmaker mode. But I do feel like sometimes the G4 just gets brighter than it's supposed to, maybe. I don't know. I think there needs to be something looked into this because uh, I don't know if it's just like the capability of the screen showing or what. But yeah, um, like that TCL screen, for example, the blue, where it shows the blue. It was just like so much brighter than the rest of the TVs that it was kind of odd to a degree like i would love to see uh if there's anything going on behind the scenes so i suspect there could be but i might be like just that might just be something that sticks out as like it's odd it's just odd to me that there there is specific scenes where the g4 is just miles brighter than the other tvs Can you play small movie clips or movie screenshots? I want to see a movie like The Batman since it's a dark movie. I can do like screenshots. <laughs> That's the best I could do. We'll see if we can fit them in. I cannot do clips. Clips are not going to happen. Because uh, copyright will be all over me for clips, unfortunately. Uh, let's go to some other demos. One sec. I want to go back to this screen on the TCL real fast, though. Hopefully my uh, Apple TV doesn't crash. So there was this blue scene right here. I'm going to see if I can pause it on time. coming up
Oh god, it just crashed. Oh no, it didn't. <laughs> okay. It just it just selected the other YouTube video. I hate that update. I'm not sure why they did that update. It's going to drive me nuts though. I know that for a fact. Um Here we go. Like why is that so much brighter than the other TVs? Can somebody explain why this is so much brighter? This scene particularly. Is this just showing off the luminance capability? I'm I'm not sure. Like I can't give you a definitive answer on to why it's doing this. But it certainly does stick out as like just being brighter, you know? Yeah, actually, uh, Classy, I, I was I texted you about that, um, saying that when I was using professional mode, it seemed to be better with bringing the color back into the highlights. Um, and I think that's just a really cool thing. Anyway, I don't think it does anything for this one particularly, but, you know, what I've noticed is, like, if you use professional mode, it will drop the luminance a little bit, but you will get, like, color back. Um, so that's really great. Let's go see see if it does anything to this. Um, yeah, this it doesn't do anything particularly to this one, but um, there is a couple of scenes where, by the default levels, will do something. And I'm I'm sure, classy, you have a way to make this look like the Sony if you want to too, right? Like with these, um, what would the values be to like make it look directly like a Sony? I mean, obviously, this scene's not really doing anything uh, with the Sony involved for, like, clipping or anything like that. But, but yeah, this is just one of those particular scenes that stick out to me as, like, wow, you know? Like, the G4 is really doing a great job, like, with luminance. Yeah, no upscaling here. Professional mode on the A95L is very dim. This is not the A95L. But if you're talking like in general, I don't think so. Maybe dim in comparison to the other modes. It really just depends on how you like to watch TV. Let's go ahead and put this into vivid mode, this scene. Uh, it's probably going to dim the screens, but... It's funny because, like, I don't think vivid mode will be much brighter than filmmaker mode. Actually, if you look at that... I actually think that uh, filmmaker mode is brighter than vivid mode on this because vivid mode's doing a lot of clipping with the colors and you're just losing so much. So it's like, this scene in particular must be a very bright scene. Uh, because filmmaker mode's killing it, and you're you're retaining everything. You're not losing much with the filmmaker mode here, but like you can see, vivid mode's like gone. Um, so, pretty interesting scene here. What's that? Uh, it sound like I got a text, but I didn't. Okay, so let's put the S90D uh, in dynamic and see if that does anything for it. Uh, as you can see, it really doesn't. <laughs> this is a fun scene. I actually think this scene is fun. I love this demo in general to show colors and um, be able to pause it on the different colors and see how they react. It's funny, like, a lot of people think that this filmmaker mode is, like, this dim mode. It's really not. As you could just see, like, when I was showing you vivid mode, uh, compared to filmmaker mode, I actually got more impact and more feeling out of this filmmaker mode for that particular image. It just really depends on, is it 
is the scene that you're looking at meant to be bright? If it is, filmmaker mode is going to give you that scene bright, just as bright as it would in vivid mode if it's meant to be that bright. But if you want to use vivid mode, it's going to make all your scenes look super bright. So it's just all about how you want to watch TV. There's no wrong or right answer for you personally. But if you understand that, maybe, you know, you would be exper like experimenting with different modes and realizing that, hey, like, I actually could get a more enjoyable experience if I try different modes and, and maybe I'll like it, you know. Captain Solo, thank you for the super chat. He says, uh, we have the S90C. Is the G4 worth the premium over the G3 for moderate gaming streaming content with the emphasis on sports viewing? Thanks, KG. I would absolutely say, yeah, I think the G4 is worth it over the G3, um, especially if you're willing to wait a little bit and get it at a little bit more of a discount down the line. The G4 does things that... Um, just surpass the other TVs, especially if you're somebody who's going to watch sports in a brighter environment. G4 can absolutely do that. Uh, I will show you some examples with the G4 a little bit later um, and see if the S95D can keep up with it because I actually haven't ran this test with the S95D. But particularly when I'm trying to run SDR, this is a little trick I do. I, I sometimes run SDR with the Apple TV HDR conversion when I'm watching sports. I just do it to make sure I can get the maximum light output out of my TV uh, for sports. And it just seems to do a good job. I don't know if it's you know recommended to do that. I don't really care. It's just what I do. And I think I have a really good like image coming out for sports for all the TVs. But the G4 is just on another level when I do set it up like that. I haven't tested that with the S95D though. But yeah, I would say the G4 is worth the premium over the G3. And especially since you mentioned gaming, we got to talk about the color brightness difference when you go into game mode on the G3 is quite noticeable. That's fixed on the G4. So for that alone, um, there's an improvement there. Yeah, so thank you for that super chat, Captain Solo. Really appreciate it. And Classy letting uh, everybody know how how it works, right? Um, when the content is graded high using an accurate mode, you'll be using... So, sorry, let me rephrase this. <laughs> Catch my breath. When the content is graded high using an accurate mode, you'll use more of the panel ability. A lower grade isn't pushing the luminance hard then in the ac inaccurate modes you can push more brightness so pretty much like he was saying if you use vivid mode with something that's not graded high you know you'll you'll push the panel brightness a little bit more but it's not supposed to be like that and if you're watching high graded content you're actually going to get a brighter presentation in the accurate modes than you would in the vivid modes I believe that's what Classy is trying to say. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is that what you're trying to say? Like the accurate modes will give you a better, brighter presentation if you're watching high graded content than the inaccurate modes. All right, let's... uh. Let's spice things up a little bit. Let's put some lights on. Oh, God. You see my cable mess. I'm sorry about that. So we'll put one light on. Uh, and uh, this is going to be kind of aimed at the S90 5D. So this is aimed at the S95 D. You can kind of see it in the bottom right corner. So this is aimed directly at the S95D. And I'm going to keep it there for a while. I've got other lights, don't worry. But this is designed to stress test the S95D. So we are going to stress test the heck out of it. 
So you can kind of see there's a reflection on the G4 when there's a black screen. Let's go to some darker content. And I will move the lights around to make it fair, of course. The problem is, is you can't really do a super fair comparison um, unless you have lights at every single location. So that's a, a little bit tougher to do. But let's go back to that LG playlist because that's a lot of, there's some darker ones in there. Um, and that'll help us kind of figure it out. And remember, it's not ideal to have a light pointing at your TV. Remember that. Please do remember that. Do not have a light just pointing at your TV. You're not having a good experience with any TV. Um, and I know most, most people won't have a light pointing at their TV. So this is just a single light from a lamp. Just a little, uh, what do you call these, a tree lamp? Where it almost looks like a spotlight thing. And remember, this is just on the S95D. Go ahead and put on a different light. That light's not really doing anything. <laughs> I was expecting that light to like impact a little bit more, but that second light really, really not doing anything. But the fact that you, in most scenes, unless it's a dark scene, you actually do not see this light at all. It has to be a darker color, darker black. Samsung ruined it with the coating. I just didn't think the coating is not for you if, if you don't like it. Um, because there's going to be reasons why you won't like the coating if you're in a brighter room. Um, this coating actually helps you, not hurt you, most of the time. And I'll show you, um, like when the sun comes in, how I'll, I'll be able to kind of break that down. But it's all about what you prefer and preference. Like, if you don't like this, though, you, you just, you just don't like it. <laughs> like, that's, that's about it. But I do think it, it has been, like, very, I would say, overblown at how bad it is. It's not bad. And I showed you with the lights off. It's, you can't tell. So I have another light. You can kind of see it sometimes. This one isn't as bright. And now, to be fair, there's nothing shining on the G4 yet. I'm going to go ahead and put on my monitor. Maybe you can see a reflection of my monitor. Um. I have an LG C1 48 inch that I'm currently using as my computer monitor. I'll put that on. Um, that is going to be directly in front of all four TVs. Let's see if that has an impact. I don't know if it will, but we'll see. We got to go to some darker scenes. I know. I'm just going to have to pause it on one of these darker ones. Problem is, is when I do that, the dimming is going to kick in. You know it will. I'm just going to pause it on this. So, because we're going to just let some more light in. But um, if you see, uh, I have kind of the light now pointing down a little bit more. You start to see it's like a mirror on the other TVs, on the G4 and stuff. And then if I point the light over over here to the AADL, you can see that. But I'm going to go ahead and turn my monitor on so you can see. I'm trying to move the lights around. 
Don't worry. We're about to get really crazy in here. Uh, give me a second. Actually, let's go to like a full screen here. Yeah, let's go to this. I don't know if you can see the reflection of the monitor or anything yet, but um, I just want to see. Let's let's try to do some more lights. Of course, this is going to be really hard to set up, and I will move things around. So bear with me. distracting all right so now i have the curtains open right and i'm gonna tell you right now this s90 5d looks the worst on the black screens and you'll see it gets um uh, gets better hold on I'm going to lower the camera so you can see the reflections a little bit better too. So right now this is with the curtain open, but the blinds are shut. So the curtains open, but the blinds are shut. And my window is directly across from the TVs, but there is a monitor in front. You can kind of see the reflection of the blinds being closed on the AADL right now. Here, let me open it up now. Best way to do this. All right, so the blinds are now open. Um, so you can see when there's a lot of light coming in, the blinds are open. Let me turn off the other lights because we don't really need the lights when we have the blinds open, right? Uh, so blinds are open. So let's go ahead and run this content while the blinds are open. By the way, the blinds are going to show up on the top too. Because you can see them on the AADL. So you, if um, so, a little washed out image. You would take the reflection over the the washed out image slightly washed out not even really washed out i would say like you're basically just turning your oled tv into a very very good mini led tv when you have lights on it like this when you have it in a super bright room and i do have the monitor on behind too it's running a screensaver Surprisingly, that's not being picked up too, uh, too much. So, like, imagine watching, like, Game of Thrones, things like that, and you ha let's say you have a bigger window than this, or 
You're just like in a brighter room. Like this is by far not even close to a bright room right now. I just have the ability to open blinds. That's kind of it. Let's see if I can let more sun in. Without knocking everything over. I don't want to knock everything over. Uh, let's see, this is actually a really dim demo. Because um, if you're watching content that's kind of dim, that's going to be where you really can run into problems. Now let's see, let me see if I can uh, let more light in one second. I don't know how though, uh, let me see. I hate this demo. I'm going to change the demo though, hold on. Uh, here, let's go to this one. I think it's not as low as I want it to be. Kind of unfortunate because I can't get the sun to fly in uh, as good as I would like it to. Um, but yesterday the sun seemed to be a little bit more aggressive and a little lower. What do you guys think of this though? As you can see, you can see it on the S90D, the blinds. You can see it on the A80L. And then you can see it on the S95D, but it's like it's diffusing it. It's diffusing the light. I'm not going to move them. That's a lot of work. But they are they are all getting light hitting it though from the blinds pretty equally. You know, it's actually kind of crazy like if I put the camera down lower um you'd have more of the perspective of like the light reflecting the carpet. You so you see like a reflection of the carpet on the screen as well. And so I don't think people realize that when you get this into a super bright room, this is why I never, I never, I try never to recommend an OLED TV to people in a super bright room. Because they just have this screen coating that is like so reflective. Now that they've gotten better, but it's always been an issue. Let me see what else I can do to uh, put some light on the TVs. I wish it was more sunnier today. It's not. <clears throat> I guess I can just aim this up. I don't know if you can see that on all the TVs or not. I 
Uh, you can't even see it because the light's just too big. Too much bright. Um, yeah, so I would say the, the biggest issue light-wise isn't necessarily natural sunlight. It's more so like these practicals. I call them practicals because that's what they call them in like um, filming and stuff, right? But these lights that get turned on uh, in your room, like ambient lights, for example, that's going to be the kind of the biggest cause of, of issues. The ones that you can even see, like certain color lights too will affect it a certain way. Let me go ahead and shut the blinds and, and mess with some lights. But when I shut the, the blinds, it's a good example of like a semi-bright room, not super bright. When I open the blinds, you're starting to get on the territory of a bright room, but I know people got way brighter rooms than this. Shut the blinds. <clears throat> I'm gonna shut the blinds as this thing goes haywire. All right, so I have a um, another light demonstration. I'm gonna shut. I'm shutting the blinds. Uh, shut the curtains. By the way, guys, invest in blackout curtains if you haven't already. Uh, so I'm gonna try some different color lights. Just this, the problem is, is this is really only gonna show up on the. Um, S95D unless I like lower them around like a lightsaber. I guess I could do that. Um, here, let's get this up and pause it on a darker part of it. I guess there's not really a scene where I guess this isn't bad. Hit the microphone. <clears throat> Try not to blind myself with some of these lights. Somebody said something about 5,000, right? 5,000 Kelvin lights. So let's try that. I can't really see the lights reflecting on. You can kind of see it lifting a little bit. But the fact that I don't see a reflection of this light right now is kind of crazy. Um, let's see. Bring this light over this way. Can you see that? I'm trying not to knock anything over. Um. So I'm lifting it up. Yeah.
The other TVs on the right won't be impacted by this test. Um, all right, let's try a different color light. <laughs> I'm actually like holding, <laughs> this is funny looking. Uh, let me see if I can get it in front of the camera. I I'm trying not to break anything here, but I do got one of these. I'm just like, it's like I'm holding it like a spear right now. This is some unorthodox testing, but this is what you get on this channel. So yeah, it doesn't look great when you have this color light on it and on a black, right? So this isn't a very bright light. This is this is what I would say is like, you know, one of these lights. It's going to be hard to get it in front of the other lights, but uh, the other TVs on the right. So I just kind of focus on S95 DEG4 right now. Let's try a different color. Let me screw that in so it doesn't break. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess I'll just try to have fun with this right now. Give me a second. Let's try red. Red will be a really odd color to have on there. How does the red light affect it? So that's red. Hey, you guys wanted all these weird tests. I'm going to do them. I got you. I'm going to be sore from this tomorrow. Watch. <laughs> uh, did the YouTube just break? What happened? My Apple TV just like said goodbye. Goodbye. That's fine, we'll just use the YouTube screen. There's green. Wow, why is it heavier now? Let's use two hands. Oh, bumping the mic. So there's the green. Green. Let's try blue and then we'll be done with this part of the test. Oh yeah, I gotta try 5,000 Kelvins, right? As you can see though, like, let's say you have a blue light like reflecting onto that right there. That's gonna kind of paint your whites for sure. And it's gonna put blue around your blacks. I don't know who has lights like this, just like aiming at their TV, but you guys are crazy sometimes with your lights, so who knows? You probably hear me straining on, on the microphone. <laughs> Always knew KG was a Sith Lord. Yep. And I, I should have ordered like some of those lightsabers for these demos. That would have been pretty fun. Now let's go to uh, like 
What did he say? He said 5,000 Kelvin lights on the astronaut. Let's see if these are any worse than other ones. So yeah, I guess like he just doesn't like the smear look to it. And it's, it's not great on either one, right? It's, it's all about kind of what you prefer though. But like who's having lights aimed at their t TV like that? It's more going to be like that where you like barely see it because it's not aimed straight at your TV. Like this is the actual light bulb at the TV. But if it, it it's sitting up like this, um, that's kind of what it's going to look like. Mm, more like this. Because that would be straight, sitting straight up. I don't have a way to demonstrate that on the G4 right now because it's a big lamp. But yeah, you kind of get it. Oh, let's see. What, what can I do? Take this off. The Bowen mount. What if I do that? I can't remember how to release this. Isn't there like a little thing here? Oh, that was close. Uh... Sorry, I just almost knocked the camera over. We're going straight beam onto the TV. Oh, goodness. All right, one sec. I got to get up for this one. How bright this one is. Oh, yeah. I guess I could do it with the AADL. That's similar coding. I don't know if that's coming across on the camera or not. Bumping the camera, my bad. All right, there's that. Um, it's like I shade like a crazy light source here. All right, I hope you guys are enjoying this because uh, that's kind of, you think we've got the whole like reflection thing? Should we do more testing on something else? Tell me to move on. John L with the super chat. Thank you. Uh, he says, hail to the Sith Lord KG. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I might have moved the TV like so many different times. <clears throat> I have to reset the Apple TV, so bear with me. I guess it overheats or something, I don't know. Oh. 
Uh, okay. So we'll do some spears in Munzel. Try gaming out? I will. So what did you guys think of the reflection test? I still have uh, this really super bright light on, just aimed at the floor. But let's see what I can do during this test. I mean, I'm telling you, this is a super, super bright light. And so this is aimed at the TV right now. And the fact that you guys don't see that is crazy. still on. Woo! It's hot in here. All right. So it really depends on your room, but in my opinion, when you have a ton of sunlight coming into the room, that's where the S95D will be really good. If you have a lot of practicals around you, a lot of ambient light, S95D might be a little bit of an issue at times, really depending on the kind of lights you have. Um, have one of those globe lights. Let me turn that on real quick. Let me see if I can, uh, it's like my actual room light. Let's see if that affects it. Um, how'd the AADL thing move? Did I bump the camera that bad where, oh, no, 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 that's right. Okay. No, that's, that's perfectly fine. I just have to move the camera back to its old position because I think I'm cutting off the AADL. All right, cool. I think it's back to where it was. Now let's see what these TVs are capable of with all the shenanigans are behind us. But anyway, like I was saying, it really does depend on your environment. Um, when the lights are off, though, there's really not a difference. Like, there is really not a difference. So, if you can light control your room, don't really factor the coding in. And the thing is, you guys are probably going to think, oh, he's just saying this to say it. Uh, it looks way worse on camera than it does in person. It really does. And I think a lot of people who have seen it and played with it, like TKK, for example, he's in the chat. He'll tell you it looks worse on camera than it does in person. Like It'll capture worse on camera. 
that's just it's just how it's gonna pick up. But if you take a look, and I can't really show you like some of the reflection um, demos unless I get really low um, or have the TVs like really elevated. But when I really had the sun like shining in yesterday, it was much. It was a much sunnier day, and everything was just my whole entire room was lit up. I could see the reflection of my carpet. I could see the reflection of the blinds. The sh I could see the shadows of the blinds on the carpet reflecting off the TV. And for me, that would be an absolute, like, no. I would not. I would not take the G4 in a bright room like that. But the S95D, I would. So, bright room, absolutely S95D. So uh, S95D's keeping up a little bit with the G4 at times on these demos. <clears throat> Interesting. Uh, I think I saw some more banding or something on the G4 there. Let's go back to that. I don't think I noticed that before. Let's see if I can see. Yeah, there's definitely more banding. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Can you see that on camera? G4 definitely has a bit more banding. Let me see if I could zoom in on that. Now, it's, it'll be super pixelated though. You can kind of see, you probably can't see it on the stream. Make sure you're watching in 4K. Uh, no banding here, banding here. So this particular scene definitely seems to be a little bit more banding. Um, on the, the G4. So that's pretty interesting. I, I don't think I've noticed that before. Keep in mind, though, the S95D and the S90D seem to have, like, probably a native smooth gradation feature that is just working always because you don't have any control over it. If you wanted to turn on smooth gradation on the LG, you can absolutely do so and alleviate that banding. I believe it's on low by default. So you'd have to crank it to, to medium or high to get rid of it there. Uh, let me check chat um, since I'm done lifting lights. By the way, this demonstration isn't to make the G4 look good. It's not to make the S95D look good. It's just to give you a good look at the TVs. That's, that's really all it is. That's why I'm showing you the worst of the S95D and I'm showing you the best of the S95D. Does S95D lower brightness in SDR game mode? It does not. I'll go through that in a little bit. I've got two side windows and no direct sunlight. I'm thinking S95D does better in that environment. Yeah, I think anytime you have reflections on the screen, um, that's kind of like not uh, what do you call, like house lights or anything like that. You shouldn't have as much of a problem. And even house lights, you shouldn't have too much of a problem. Let me pause it on this scene. Uh, I'll go ahead and turn on kind of my, my room light. Maybe you can see uh, what it does to it. Now, this is not going to show up on the G4. It should show up on the AADL. Um, but I'm not really sure how this is going to look. So let's try it out. You can't see it, can you? Nope. Ah, uh, yeah. So, um, 
you're not able to see it on the S95D, um, apparently. I, you probably can if I remove the camera. Uh, but I, I'm not trying to do that right now. Um, you can kind of see it, but just not on camera. You can't see it. But for example, that globe light there, it'll be, be slightly diffused in the corner. Mm. Let's see. What can I do to move that? Yeah, let me just turn off that light so you can see. Just the TVs by themselves. I'm gonna turn this off too. All right, now I turned off all the screens in here and all the lights and all the blinds are shut and everything, blackout curtains, and now I got it dark. So let's run these demos again. Let's go to the 2000 nit one. If you guys are enjoying this stream so far uh, and you appreciate what you've seen, if you can, go ahead and hit the like button. That'll help me out so much and um, it just helps spread this video out. So thank you guys. If you could do that, uh, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, if you're watching the stream and you're not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. I do comparisons like this quite a bit, um, especially during the comparison season. And then I will have dedicated comparison videos um, where I will kind of condense everything so you don't have to watch this two-hour stream of me just kind of rambling and tossing around lights like they're lightsabers and jousting sticks. So, um, yeah, just hope, hope I see more of you around here uh, if you're new to this stream. I'll go through chat in a second and look through all your guys' questions. I just love how clear the G4 is on this scene. I don't know what it is about this scene. But it looks good. S95D looks great here too. This is just, I guess, a high brightness uh, scene. You know, it's like one of those scenes that just really can make a TV show its strength. It's funny, it's just a puddle of water. Well, I guess it's a geyser. I should be real more, more respectful to geysers. But that said, it... <laughs> It's uh, it's interesting how the G4 is handling this. Still feels like it has more depth than the S95D. But if you had the S95D here, you would not be disappointed. Now, comparing the, like, if I'm looking at it and I'm looking at the S95D to the S90D, one thing I was going to look at and see if, like, there was a clarity difference in terms of sharpness uh, because of the coating. I thought maybe the coating would be a detriment to that. It is not. It's actually looking just as sharp as the S90D. So that's a good sign. Um, and like I said, I can't really tell the coating is there in a dark room. I love that. Um, you do not lose that OLED shine like everybody was saying you do. Because uh, I'm looking at it, it looks shinier than the S90D. Uh, the shine is going to be from the luminance and how it's coming off, like showing the highlights of the water, for example. You, you can see the S90D looks actually a little bit flatter than the S95D in a lot of scenes due to the way the tone mapping works on these TVs. They have a slightly different tone mapping algorithm, it seems. Um... There is going to be, you know, scenes where the G4 will lose, uh, and that's going to be scenes that involve color brightness. Those scenes are definitely harder to find, um, but they are there. And these scenes are also going to be scenes you're probably not going to find um, as a problem if you're just watching it on the G4 by itself. So there is that. But if you're really nitpicky 
and you really just don't want any uh, downsides to color brightness, for example, then the S95D will still be the choice because it is using the QD OLED technology. But I will say this, MLA gets really close. And I also will say this, you can change the tone mapping method to um, show a little bit more color with the G4. You'll lose a little bit of luminance, but um, from what I've seen, it does bring the color back uh, in a lot of scenes. Like I said, it's very hard to find those scenes. We're going to do some gaming as well. Let me know how is the stream going so far. Are you guys enjoying yourselves? Are you enjoying this stream? Um, what would you like to see me do differently? I'm always looking for feedback. This is a good question. Uh, Ray says, both great TVs, I'm sure. Can you talk about the depth differences? It sounds like it's a nice win for the G4. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is about the G4, but I do these scenes, and it, this could just probably be my eyes liking the higher luminance, and so I'm going towards it, and whatever it's doing, it's creating a little bit more depth to me, uh, and I think it comes across on camera as well. At times, you can see... For some reason, it just seems to have more depth than the other TVs. I can't really explain why that is, or maybe it's related to processing. Maybe it isn't. Um, maybe it's just the TV's native sharpness, and you're not having it like ruined by smoothing or anything like that. So it could be a, like a number of different things. I think brightness does factor into it quite a bit. So one thing that you guys have to remember is the brighter the TV... Well, the better it's going to look in HDR because the less it's going to have to tone map. When you tone map, you are going to lose a little bit of brightness. That's just kind of how tone mapping is going to work um, in terms of the, the luminance coming out of the TV. Now, you may think it looks brighter based on how the tone mapping is being applied. For example, if something is getting clipped, to your eyes, that might be brighter. So it's really... It's really, it's kind of like one of those things where you look at it, like this scene, for example. I think, personally, this scene, uh, and let me change the camera exposure to show this scene a little bit better. But I think this scene, for example, I see uh, like a more of a 3D effect on the G4. Like people ask me about this 3D, which one looks more 3D? Whatever the G4 is doing in this scene, it's doing it better than all of the other TVs. Now, it's not totally fair to Sony because I don't have the A95L here to compare, but they are using the same processor. However, the A80L is not gonna get to the same luminance as the A95L. So it's important to remember that we can't discount that. Like, I am trying to get my hands on another A95L. I did have it earlier, but you know, I had to move it because it wasn't feasible to keep that TV long-term. It's just one of those things where I, I gotta only have a certain amount of TVs. I don't have a lot of space. Um, this is not a very big situation that I'm in. Hopefully that changes in the near future, but uh, we gotta work with what we work with. So let me lower, um, let me raise the exposure a little bit in this scene without clipping. Actually, I don't wanna clip. I don't wanna clip. All right, so hopefully you can kind of get an appreciation for this scene. Uh, and then I will say this. When I sit on a scene for a little bit, and this is why I do think it's sort of related to luminance, is when you are going to sit on a scene for a little bit, um, 
the G4 starts to look like the other TVs. So I do think like, you know, it's using a lot of power for uh, its delivery and then it just will slowly dim down if it's stuck on a scene, you know, because of ASBL or whatever mechanisms that are in place protecting the TV. So uh, let me actually go to the scene before this because that's another good example of um, where I was saying the depth just really sticks out. So if you take a look at just, I, I don't know what it is, but like I said, the G4 just has this depth. Um, there's more emphasis on the textures. And like I said, it might be the native sharpness of the TV here. But it does, it does come across as being that good. Now, I don't remember seeing this with the G3. Um, comparing it, say, to the S90C, the S95C, I didn't get that feeling, and even the A95L. Like, I never got that feeling from the G3. So I think there is something going on with this G4 that is kind of related to being uh, a newer processor, you know, having a newer generation MLA panel. I think a lot of this is going to factor into why the TV is looking the way it looks. That's just my theory on that. Could be wrong. Um, I'm not saying that I know this for sure, but yeah. We do have a super chat. Uh, Ray says, thanks for talking about my question. Yeah, no problem at all. I thought it was a really good question, and thank you, Ray, for the super chat. So, uh, yeah, what do you guys think of this? right here like this does this stick out to you guys on camera like it sticks out to me in person do you feel like the g4 has more depth in this scene um or the scene after that like this scene in particular or do you think i'm losing my mind because <laughs> sometimes when i'm looking at these tvs i'm like is that actually sharper or am i losing my mind Am I losing something with my eyes? My eyes are just going crazy on me. Um, <laughs> that said, the S95D isn't too far behind. So, like, but I do think the G4 is, like, clarity-wise, depth-wise, I would take it. Do you care if it's doing something unnatural to the image? I mean, like, because sometimes I think maybe it is. But again, I have no way of proving that. Maybe it's just on another level. Maybe it actually is just on another level. But from my experience, filmmaker mode looked fairly similar on all the TVs I've ever looked at. Not once did they really jump off but like classy was saying like when you are watching say filmmaker mode on a scene that is high luminance the tv that can deliver that high luminance will look the best like it will be the brightest in that scene not necessarily look the best but it will look the brightest so i think it's a combination of the brightness the sharpening whatever they're doing here the clarity um, and it is on default 10. This is what you should set your LG OLED TVs to. It's by default 10 um, in 4K. That's going to give you the native sharpness. But again, it does seem to still have a little bit more banding, but that can be corrected with smooth gradation. I don't think QD OLED is dead by any means. Um, I just think that there needs to be 
an improvement with the uh, processing, things like that, and, or whatever the G4 is doing, it's doing it amazingly. <laughs> There's actually scenes that look sharper and clearer than the AADL. I'd say a good, good amount of them do. And this doesn't just come across on HDR. I mean, like, this comes across on SDR. This comes across on 1080p. It just does do something that the other TVs aren't doing. And keep in mind, I have no AI stuff on. The panel is just that good. And, the sh like, the shadow detail on the G4 is incredible as well. Try out motion smoothing options. I will on my own time and I'll report back to you guys what that is. Trying out anything related to motion on a stream. That's never a good thing. You guys can't even see it anyway. It's, it's, a, it's a waste of your time. Um, so I could just do it separately. But I, I'll tell you what I felt from motion since you asked about motion. I still feel like the G4 is delivering the best motion so far between the S95D and the G4. I think that between those two TVs, the G4 does deliver better motion overall. With that real cinema option on, I haven't had an issue with it. The S95D does still have that issue where when you're watching slow panning shots and you switch scenes, you'll have that little micro jitter. That still does happen. So um, there's that. I'm going to run through um, something else uh, after answering some more questions. Let's try 4,000 nits. A95L is still the better TV this year. I got to see it next to the G4 to make that claim. I don't feel comfortable making that claim until I see it next to the G4. Like, so hopefully I will be able to get my hands on one. So 4,000 nits, uh, they're both having difficulty showing the detail. This will be a fun way to um, look at the tone mapping options, I guess. Let's see if uh, professional mode changes anything. Again, there's so much more that you can do with professional mode. Um, it is on professional mode. So. <laughs> All right. So let's... <laughs> Let's run through that 2000 nit demo again um, when professional mode isn't on. So actually, it was clipping more on professional mode um, for 4000 nits. So that was interesting. Let's go back to the 2000 nits so uh, we can see it without the professional mode. I actually do enjoy the professional mode. I, I think that's the mode that I would suggest most people try on. Um, it is going to be showing a lot more color, in my opinion. Like when this TV ever lost color, professional mode brought it back. So, but I do want to try this demo one more time on 2000 nits being on the non-professional mode. And then we'll run out. And then before I close out Spears of Munzel, I'll run through some different modes on Spears of Munzel as well. Then we'll go to gaming. <clears throat> is that the S92D? I believe the S92D is going to be very similar to the S90D. So this is the 2000 nits, by the way. Am I cutting off some of the AADL? That's fine. I don't think there's much being cut off. Just the top a little bit. Um, that's the scene that I paused it on before, right? So let's let's see how they look. Let me look through questions. 
I know a lot of you guys might feel like I'm not answering questions. I'm sorry. Uh, it is a one-man show here, and I will open it up to questions uh, right before we wrap, I promise. Um, but let me see if I scroll through and find something. Sony is sharp, it's over sharpened. LG is sharp, look, it's sharper. I don't think either look over sharpened to me. I think when something's over sharpened, then you will see ringing, you will see artifacts. That's when it's over sharpened. Like, the native sharpness is what the native sharpness is. I don't touch the sharpness values. Um, and by default, reality creation is on. So I keep that on. And I don't think it looks over sharpened at all. Which is kind of crazy, you know. It's like the LG is interestingly looking a little bit sharper at times. Um, and I don't know that's if why that is. I really don't. Um, but the fact that it can even still look a little bit sharper. More clarity, I guess is the better word. More clarity is the better word than sharper. Um, and it has a lot to do with... A combination of different things the tone mapping the brightness output those are things that can make the image look clear more defined stick out more a little bit gives you that perceived uh clarity sharpness look i guess um but yeah like i was saying the reality creation being on um and still yet the lg does look clear at times, like for example here, I think I see more clearness in the feathers. I don't know why. <laughs> like, it's just, it is what it is, I guess. I When you have no words for something, you can't explain something. I guess you just say, I'm not sure. But I do think that there is more testing to be done on the G4 to really understand how it ticks, how it works. And I can't wait till people dive into that. Because there's a lot of scenes like this one, for example, um, and this one even, where I actually think the S95D is slightly better because the yellow. Um, the way that the yellow looks, for example, yellow has not always been a great color on W OLED. Oh, it is it is definitely clipping the camera. Let me fix that for you. Just one second. Sorry about that. So what I was explaining was the yellow looks a little bit more pure on the, the QD OLED. And it just doesn't look like a natural yellow on W OLED, and I never felt like it does. Even like if you look at the A80L here, I don't know if that even comes across on camera um, or YouTube, but just looking at it straight on in person, the color purity, for example, whatever looks pure to my eyes, I would say that it's definitely the QD OLED, and I think that I would prefer the yellows here. And that's how I feel about a lot of the yellows and oranges that I see. I, I always bring up those colors because I do think those are colors that W OLED tends to struggle with. See, like here is another good example of that as well. It's not as bad as that last one. So you could actually get away with the G4 and the AADL for a scene like this. The flower actually looks pretty fine here, too. So the camera is not picking this up correctly. It's actually turning the S95D white. Uh, that's not actually what's happening. Kind of the other way around. Let me see if I could let in a little bit. It's funny because the G4 is doing actually a really good job here at matching the S95D. So this color is, is fine on it, but it is going to really depend on the brightness and the shade of the color I've seen in the past. Like here, I'm not a big fan of the way this pen looks, but I've always felt that way with W OLED. It's just something about the yellows.
this is a really fun comparison to do. Um, I'll do gaming in, in a little bit, of course. I just wanted to make sure I get a chance to run through as much as possible. Oh, and I, I also wanted to kind of talk about the Sony A80L because people always say this is like such a dim TV. It's really not. It's really not. At times it trades blows with the S90D, which is pretty bright. Um, So just, yeah, that's nonsense. When people say the A80L is a dim TV, that's just complete, complete nonsense. Do not listen to them. Um, And so I'm kind of excited for the Bravia 8 this year despite it being just a W OLED without MLA I would just love to see what they do with the newer panel because the C4 I'm excited to see that as well as I've heard that got improvements this is a really cool scene I've always thought this one can stick out um when done right So, the rock might be clipping the camera a little bit, but what do you guys think of this scene? Does the G4 leap out to you on this scene? Because it leaps out to me on this scene. I'm going to leave it on here for just a second. See if we can get the dimming to kick in and see if it makes it change the way that they look. People are always twisting the narrative with the A80 series. Yeah, you know how many times I've heard this, that the TV is just so much dimmer than the C3? Like, it's not. Yeah, the rocks, yeah, the rocks really do stick out. Uh, just the definition of, like, the actual, uh, I don't know if that's crocodile, alligator, I'm not, not an expert there. But that... The creature is definitely sticking out a little bit more. Um, the scales, like if you look at the scales, especially on the body, they tend to like just leap out at me. Um, and so that's just another example of when I talk about brightness in the right places, this seems to be like emphasizing the brightness in the right places. Um, so the sun light actually looks like it's coming off of the rock here. And I would honestly dare to say... <laughs> the other pictures, even the S95D to some degree, looks a little flatter than the G4. The G4 actually sort of has this somewhat artificial feeling to it. It's not totally using AI, or maybe it is, and they're just not telling us that it's on. Well, wow, it's it's an incredible, I don't care what is on, what is not on, I don't care, it looks good to me. Um, and I think that's the, the main thing that I'm trying to convey, is it looks incredible. I still haven't seen the dimming kick in. I don't know if it will. <laughs> it's like whenever I want the dimming to kick in, it's like, nah, we're not going to dim. But then when I don't want it to kick in, it dims. Yeah, maybe I just need... Maybe you just need new glasses. I think sometimes maybe I need new glasses because 
every time I look at the picture, it's like the G4 is so much clearer. It's like, is the top half of my glasses dirty? Is like, or like the all the other sides of my glasses dirty except for what shows the the G4? And then I clean my glasses and it still looks clear. And I'm like, all right, all right, uh, I don't know. I have no words for you on that one. It's just clear. I want to go to some, um, all right, I see them dimming a little bit. Actually, I see them dimming quite a bit. You'll start to see, once it starts to dim, the G4 loses its, like, punch. Which is, okay, that's fair. It should, um, because it's losing, you know, brightness. AADL is holding its own. It really is holding its own. This is 2000 nit um, Spears of Munzel. S90D looking brighter than the 95 now. I could see that. More details on the S95D. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I don't see that. But. What shortcomings does the G4 have? Um, You know, so it has that limitation of uh, W OLED, for example. Um, So you'll have color brightness. Not as good as, say, like QD OLED. But I don't think that's a, a deal killer, per se. Because it's not going to be something you really notice. Um, the other shortcoming the G4 has slightly more post, like slightly more posterization, uh, color banding, um, in some challenging scenes for it. Yeah, now they're starting to dim. Look at the screen now. G4 is dimming it. I can actively see it dimming right now. <laughs> this is kind of crazy to watch. <laughs> I never just like watch the TVs dim, but I see it. It's like blinking downwards. I guess in a way, this is an ASBL test with an alligator or a crocodile. What is it? I forget. I should know these things. Who watches stills for 10 minutes straight? Yeah, I mean, that's fair. Not not many people, but we're just testing um, to see what happens if it just like sticks on it, right? G4 is fading. Yeah, I've noticed that. They're all fading. They all look quite dimmer now. S90D dimming the least? It does appear that way, doesn't it? It's funny, the AADL looks so bright on camera. Like, when they're all dim like that. This is eye care turned on. Takes a while to dim, though. So it does really depend on the scene. Like, if it's a darker scene... I've noticed the Samsungs tend to dim it a little faster. S95D is looking really dim right now. I wonder what, like, what's the cutoff point? Is it just going to completely go dark or what? I mean, it's a good time to go through questions while we're waiting for it. That's why I'm just kind of keeping it on this screen, scrolling through. My A80J and C10 are too dim. I don't know. I guess it depends though. Like if you're watching content that's super bright, you can make that argument. I still love my A80J. I really do. Could you go back to the rock monument wall? Yeah, you know, that's another one that did stick out to me. Sure. Yeah, I'll go back to that. 
I I think I know what scene you're talking about. I hope we're talking about the same scene. Doesn't look like they're dimming much more. I'm waiting for like this this severe dimming to happen. It has not. It's just dimmed a little bit. All right, let's bring them back. How do I do that without like messing everything up? Uh, there we go. Up, oh, I brought the G four back. I couldn't bring the other ones back, but just a slight unpause pause brought the G four back to Earth. My goodness. Um, <laughs> if if somebody tunes into the stream now, they're like, I'm buying the G four. I'm buying it. G four is copped. G four is in the cart. This is how I sell TVs, guys. I'm just <laughs> I don't know what why the other TVs aren't coming back. All right, we're getting uh, a little bit of get back there. Maybe I have to back fully out to the the menu screen to bring all of them back. <laughs> oh man! All right, hopefully this is all. They're all back to full brightness now. It was kind of funny. The G four just was the only one that wanted to come back. You are an excellent reviewer, bro. Thank you. I really do appreciate that. Have you tested max brightness yet? Like, brightness still somewhat color accurate mode? Uh, are you talking about, like, Cinema Home? Sure, I'll test that. But one thing I will say, like, Filmmaker Mode can absolutely deliver the same brightness as Cinema Home if you're pumping the right content at it. But yeah, I'll test that. I'll probably test it on a thousand nit content since like that's why you would probably be using Cinema Home in the first place. This picture right here will go viral. <laughs> You're probably right. Like I'm just gonna see it there and it'll be like, this is why you buy the G4 guys. TVs are now all at dimming, different dimming phases. <laughs> the S95D or S90D have a 3D pop to it. I mean, it has depth. Like, if you just watch it by itself, you will get the sense of, like, that depth. But if it's next to a TV that has a little bit more depth, for example, like, I like this scene as well. Just the grass sticks out to me. When I think about depth, I think about, like, where the image is closest, like, what's pulling my eyes in the most. And can I feel like there is layers to the image? Um, and absolutely feel like that with the G4 a lot of times. So they nailed that feeling. Like, a lot of companies talk about their depth processing and... Um, their depth mapping, and you hear this a lot in their marketing. I think LG just nailed it, whatever they're doing. So, um, yeah, great job, LG. Is G4 in Warm 2? If so, try Warm 1. It's on default filmmaker mode. I believe that's Warm 50. Um, I don't know why. Why would I want to try Warmer 1? Are you talking about Samsung on Warm 1? Because uh, the, the Samsungs are on Warm 2, as that's going to be what you want to put the Samsungs on. Yeah, if you're watching Solo, it's like it does still give you that depth. Um, but when a TV is doing it better, it, you know, of course I can point that out to you. I can nitpick those differences, but I really do think all through, like all the brands, all the top brands deliver that depth. They really do. It's going to be interesting to see if the C4 changed anything. And I have that same feeling with the C4. I can tell you, I never got that feeling with the C3, uh, or the C2 or the C1. And I doubt I'm going to get it with the C4 as well. I, I do think a lot of this is related 
to the processing. It has to be. I, like, I can't figure out why it wouldn't be. So I guess we'll have to see because uh, the C4 will be something we will get in uh, hopefully before um, we got to move the G4 out. But I am, I'm honestly, I'll be honest with you guys, I'm considering just buying a G4 um, to keep around as like a TV to test other TVs against, especially if I could somehow get my hands on an A80L again, or sorry, an A95L again, because I, I do want to make that comparison. Uh, is the S95 D superior by a lot over the S95 C. I don't like the matte finish, by the way. If you're not a fan of the screen coating, I think you'll like the S95 C as it delivers a lot of the same attributes. It's not as bright, but it gets there. Like, I would say my S95 B, for example, is almost just as bright as the S95 D in a lot of scenes. Like, does the S95D get brighter? Absolutely. Um, is it super noticeable? No, not really. Um, so, I, I do think that, like, QD OLED tends to look around the same no matter what generation you get. There is characteristics about it that tend to just look the same um, as long as it's set up the same. And I've seen that last year when I compared the S90C to the S95B. I've seen that last year when I did s 95 C to the S95B, and you know, I'm seeing it this year when I'm comparing this year's QD OLEDs to even the S95B. So I do think that the panel generation, so to speak, is slightly, um, people worry about it a little bit too much, I think, as I don't see a huge difference there. Uh, the rock monument wall, I, I forgot which one that was. I was supposed to pause it on the, that. I believe it's back here. Um, this one, I think. Is this the one you were talking about? Yeah, this one does uh, actually have a little bit more depth as well. Yeah, the S95D actually probably will have that better feeling of color because it is going to be default BT2020 in, in like filmmaker mode and movie, uh, which is going to be more appropriate for the panel, uh, in my opinion, over like, say, like the S95C, um, S90C, which is in DCI-P3 by default. It's probably why it has the punchier color but there might be a slight panel difference uh, from generations. I doubt it, though. Um, not enough to write, really make that much of a difference. Like I'm saying, I don't see a huge like difference with like color and how color pops from like the S95D to the S90D. I'm pretty sure the S90D is using a Generation 2 panel, uh, and the S95D is you know, using that Generation 3 panel. Hey Mac, thank you for the super chat. I don't know if you have a message to go along with this, but let me look in chat, see if I see anything. But the super chat is much appreciated. Thank you. Um, let's see, did he say anything? Uh, he said, I really like the G4. Colors look great. No way I would buy the matte finish. Yeah, that's a polarizing finish for sure. A lot of people were asking, like, why did they put that on the premium flagship TV? It's just because it's a premium flagship feature. It's easy to sell to people. Um, if you're thinking about it from somebody who works at Best Buy trying to upsell you, say, something a little bit better because it might be better for your bright room, for example. Um, they could just talk about the problems that people have with glare on their TV and 
it's just an upsell. It's kind of an easier upsell. That's why it made sense for them to put it on the more premium model. And also you do need more brightness to kind of push through this coating. So yeah, I'm not trying to defend it or anything. I'm just trying to give you a um, reasoning why they did it instead of putting it on the S90D. I'm trying to put myself in their shoes and think about why they did it. Whether I agree with it or disagree with it, doesn't matter. They did it. FOMO, what's up? Did I miss the big reveal? Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, I've been streaming for about two hours. Uh, we're going to do gaming in a second. That'll be a fun one to do. I'm on 2000 nit content right now. And FOMO, the chat is saying that the G4 clarity and sharpness is sticking out. And I am not a psychopath for thinking that. <laughs> so I could confirm that I am not crazy for thinking this. You did miss this though, FOMO. You missed me uh, swinging around my lamps like they're jousting sticks uh, and pretending I was a Sith Lord, apparently. Uh, so there was that. You missed that part. And chat has been really awesome. It's been fun to interact with chat. So thank you all uh, for being just, this is making my day better. Like I woke up feeling kind of bad, to be honest with you. I don't know why. Like my stomach kind of hurt. I was just like in a bad mood. <laughs> but then I remembered, hey, like I actually do got some work to do today. Let's get this and let's, let's try to figure this out. So I'm feeling better now. And you guys helped me feel better. I do have a little bit of a like warning on my camera saying that it might overheat. So if it does go out, I'll let the camera rest for a second and then bring it back and use that time to answer questions. It may be a 55 inch G4 thing. Are you saying like the 65 inch G4 is not good? Because the S95D is also 55 inch. Go back to the windmill and look at motion. I don't think that windmill is going to show you much with motion, but uh, motion comparisons on a stream is just the silliest thing in the world to try to do. I mean, like you can try to do it. And I'm not saying that if you do it, you're silly. I'm just saying that people trying to judge what you're doing, that's, that's kind of silly because you're never going to see motion on a stream. Um, like, for example, FOMO tried to show you it, and you guys all got it, or <laughs> you guys all got it wrong in chat um, on what was going on. So it's just hard to judge, right? And, not, and to be fair, it's not even just hard to judge on stream. It's like, it's hard to capture, period. ADL is so dim. I, I don't think it's dim. I really don't think it's dim. It's just dimmer than the other super bright OLEDs. <laughs> and at times, it's actually trading blows, John. I really do think it, at times it is trading blows. It just doesn't have the same peak luminance as the other, but it does a really good job for what it is. I'll tell you that it would be doing a better job than the C3 did in scenes like this because I've seen it with my own eyes. So there's that. Hey, 83 inch G4 under 4,500. Man, that would be nice. Oh, by comparison? Yeah. Um, that's fair.
You also have to keep in mind all the price tags for these TVs. 880L, aka A75L, is a lot cheaper than all of these TVs right now. And I think a majority of people would actually be really just thrilled with that picture that the A80L's applying, uh, giving to you, I should say. All right, let's do some some game game mode. Oh wait, no, I promised you guys the dynamic tone mapping right all right let's do that you guys are going to lose it if i don't do dynamic tone mapping and then vivid mode and all that stuff so some of you guys are going to lose it i'm not all of you i'm not classifying you all in one category but there are some of you guys out there that will absolutely lose it so um we will do see the problem is there's not really a way to show you um a fair mode on the Sony, so let's just load this up actually. Um, pause it on this scene for now. All right. Um, so I'm going to go to my personal cinema mode. And then on these, we'll do their default movie modes. So movie mode is going to have dynamic tone mapping on it. <laughs> Where'd the other remotes go? On the floor. Apparently, I knocked the remote over with my light earlier. All right. So I'm doing a thousand nits because I want you to see the way like dynamic tone mapping is going to like do it. So you can try it with other content too, but uh, let's not do cinema home. Uh, maybe we should. I don't know. Should we? Is that fair? If we just do cinema. Because I, I don't know if we if it's fair to put on expression enhancer, so to speak, without putting on contrast enhancer. But I think contrast enhancer absolutely ruins the image. So that'll be on when vivid mode's on anyway when we do that comparison. Okay. So everything is set up correctly. Let's run this demo. Are you even good at games, KG? Wow, that feels like an insult. I don't know if that's just a question or an insult, but I am I'm okay at games. I used to be really good at games. Um yeah, I beat all the Souls games. I don't know if that makes me good at games or not, but I'm good at those kind of games. <laughs> I'm good at certain games. It really depends on the game. You guys think this is fair? A thousand nits on Spears of Munsell with dynamic tone mapping on? Is there a, a better way to do this? What do you think? No, I, I'm just I'm just playing with you. I didn't think that the question was offensive. It just could have been worded as that. Could have been worded as that. It's just a camera from the broadcast in person. It actually looks slightly too cool. Are you talking about the Sony? Sony's tend to look a little bit cool. Yeah. I think the S95D is doing a really good job here. Um, you 
you really got to put on it like the expression enhancer to take the G4 to a level where like I don't think that's 95D can go without like dynamic zone mapping, for example. I can't wait to see the Bravia 9 FOMO. Like, I just, I, I honestly think I might be higher on the Bravia 9 than I think a lot of people are. I don't know. I think you're pretty high on it too, but it just feels like nobody's doing mini LED on the level of the Bravia 9. Like, in terms of the premium category, unless you're talking about the TCL and Hisense, like super expensive things that people aren't going to get in the 98 inch and 115 inch screen size. But even then, I don't trust that 100%, you know? I should be putting up the mode that it's in. Hmm. Here, let's actually put it in the home cinema mode. I'll say this, the S95D is doing way better than the S90D did in this comparison. Mm, that's slightly clipping the camera, my bad. Let me see what I could do about that. Yeah, we're going to do gaming in just a second. Uh, So just hold your horses, please. Yeah, S95D is holding its own here. It actually is, yeah. Surprisingly. It looks really good, to be honest with you. Um, with the, the home cinema mode on. The movie mode. But still, like, I, it's just something the lighting's doing on that scene. Keep going back to that scene, but... S95D is bright, crazy, beating the G4 a lot of times. Yeah, it, it trades blows. Like, I was telling this to a few people, like, I think that with white white luminance, for example, the G4 is winning that completely. But anytime, like, you insert color into the mix, uh, you start to kind of have a different opinion of things. Yeah, it's it's really hard to tell the impact of color intensity and luminance when the camera is working for four TVs. You're right. It definitely is. Here, I could... Do you guys want me to turn off the other TVs for these examples? I mean, I could. I can. Like, I don't mind. Like, we we could just turn them off. <laughs> Cass is getting wild, is it? <laughs> the cheap rid of feed horses. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Although everything's going up, so horses might actually be expensive to own. There's a reason why a lot of only like only rich people have horses. So yeah, I would imagine it's just like really SD is completely right with that. Like, you're not going to notice a huge brightness difference. Uh, not unless you've actually had a set before that. 
you've like recently looked at a set or you have the set side by side like I do here. Because if you get any of these to your home, you're going to love it. Like even the AADL is going to look really fantastic and provide enough HDR impact to make you say, wow, that's crazy. That's incredible. I love that. Like, so yeah, you'd be, you'd be fine with any of these TVs. Try S95D on Warm 1, see what you think. Why? I still haven't gotten a reason. What's the reasoning for trying S95D on Warm 1, exactly? Okay, let's try, see if 2000 nits changes anything. <laughs> yeah, we're going to switch to gaming in a second. Let's do the G4 and S95D only. All right, fine. Let's do it. It's going to look weird just like with just those two on the side, but here, we'll do this like this then. Let's, uh, let's maneuver these, I guess, and then turn these off for now. Um, I taped my remote. Ugh, this might turn off the other TV though. Oh, it turned on the right TV. Off the right TV. We're good. <laughs> We're good. We're good. Um. So I did turn off the other TVs, like you guys requested. This is 2000 nit content now. Still in the home cinema modes. We'll do Vivid in a second, and then we'll switch to gaming. Yeah, we're a try Elden Ring for sure. I love testing Elden Ring because I can warp to different environments that look completely different. Uh, I believe Caleb reviewed the S95D, said he found Warm 1 to be more accurate and natural than Warm 2 in filmmaker mode. Uh, keep in mind that when Caleb said this, he was testing at the Samsung facility. So it could have been that the TVs were set up in Warm 1 or pre-configured in Warm 1 to be better because I believe Classy tested the S90D and the S95D and found that Warm 2 was the more accurate mode. So it could have just been like how uh, the TVs were where Caleb was at. I think this is like a specific use case to his situation at the time. I could be wrong, but that's my guess. And that's what Classy thinks as well. What is the most vivid game? Oh, I got some. I think I got some vivid games. Yeah, we'll test SDR gaming as well. <laughs> Why does the G4 look so much better? I, there's times where it does. Um, there's really don't have a way to tell you. I think they look very similar in this home cinema mode, by the way. Um, I'm getting way more color, though, from the S95D. I don't know if that's coming across on camera or not. Probably not. Cameras tend to have trouble picking up color brightness themselves. Unless you really drop the exposure. HDR gaming experience will improve greatly on the G4. Yeah, from the G3 to the G4 is night and day for game mode. Night and day. Because that that drop was so noticeable. I don't know how people said that it wasn't there when 
like you could prove it it was there like i don't know how many times i had to prove it like i'm not crazy i'm not just saying these things i don't hate lg i'm not trying to just discredit lg um so like i don't know why everybody said i was crazy for saying that because it's clearly obvious now um thankfully a lot of people did believe me so i didn't feel like i was going totally nuts Uh, so this is a good question. KJ FOMO, does Sony processing cause more lag in gaming? So what it does do, it depends on what you're going to use with the processing features. The more processing like features that you would use, and when I say processing features, I mean like the things that are in the settings menu. Uh, it's not necessarily tied to the processing features, so maybe I shouldn't word it like that. The more settings that you turn on um, will add input lag to your gaming signal so it's to be honest you know i game with reality creation on and i really do not notice a difference uh i haven't really tried the other modes like the other settings too much but they don't seem to have too much of a like a input lag like difference so i don't know i have no problem with sony's game mode for input lag G4 Red's looking good here. Mine was orangey though. Maybe my settings were off. You have to remember that I'm in Cinema Home SD. So Expression Enhancer is on as well. So that has an effect on the colors. You want me to turn on Contrast Enhancer? Sure, why not? Um... I think a better thing to do is probably just go into vivid mode, but I got you. It washes out the colors, though. It clips the colors. It washes out the colors. Um, so, yeah. Does it look a little bit brighter? Sure. Looks a little bit brighter. Is it worth that trade-off? Heck no. You're losing so much color information. You're losing so much just information in general with the picture. Um, I'm going to put... Uh, contrast Enhancer on. So Contrast Enhancer is on now. I'm going to go back on the demo. But do you see how washed out it looks now? Everything is just getting lifted too. Contrast Enhancer is like what dynamic tone mapping does on LG, but on steroids where it's just going to like, wow, you know, goodbye image. Like any sort of high dynamic range you had with the image, you lose your, your dynamic range, period. Like when you use Contrast Enhancer, that's why I try to tell people not to use it if you can i understand people just like it but you're losing a lot you really are go back to al yeah we will i hope you guys can i hope the washed out look does come across on stream for the contrast enhancer Let's go back to that owl. I believe he's towards the end. I guess I could be zoom. I could be fast forwarding a little faster. That owl? Are you talking about the one that's in the dark? I'm going to pause it on this for a second and I'm going to go to the one in the dark. I think you mean the one in the dark, so that one.
I'm gonna go ahead and switch it to Vivid now. Then we're gonna go to gaming. Because my camera's probably gonna yell at me soon. Dynamic mode is right. Um, all right, let's uh, let's run it back. But let's not run it back all the way though. Let's just run it back a little bit. Okay. Yeah, let's actually, actually let's just run it back. Oh, I just plug in. Um, yeah. So problem with vivid mode that a lot of people don't really think about is there's so much ringing, there's so many artifacts, there's so much blinking. Like if you just look at the picture, it it does so many things that it's not supposed to do. Uh, in terms of the artifacts, you'll see like you'll see flashing artifacts, you'll see blinking artifacts, you'll see uh, ringing, things like that. So now we are testing Vivid Mode. By the way, you can't see anything in the snow. Yeah, contrast enhancer looks horrible. It does on the Samsung. I'll tell you, it looks pretty good on the Sony. I love their advanced contrast enhancer. I think it's pretty solid. But Samsung's contrast enhancer, I've never been a fan of. God, look how blue that water is. <laughs> would you swim in that water? I would think there would be something wrong with that water. Um, Personally. I'll be like, I'm not going in that water. Whoa. That's doing some crazy stuff. Hold up. Look in this. I don't know if this comes across on the camera, but I've never seen that. That's some weird artifacting. Um, Look at the G4. Let me see if I can adjust my camera. <laughs> I'm actually going to go to the lowest exposure possible to show you vivid mode. But can you guys see what this is doing? Let me see if I can zoom in on that. That is weird. That's like a like a checkerboard pattern or something. I can't see it. I can't see it. You guys can't really see it. Let me see if I could. Uh, can you guys see it? It's like moving. That's the weirdest artifact I've ever seen. Again, this won't happen in other modes. So, um, yeah, there's that. Vivid mode is my fave. Leo, if you get the G4, I promise you to try Cinema Home and you will just say, like, that's your new favorite because it does everything in terms of brightness almost just as crazy as... Vivid, just not to the same, like, wild, so many artifacts on the screen, things blinking around, issues with color. Yeah, definitely, if you get the G4, please promise me you'll try Cinema Home at least. They're both in different modes now? I, what? Are they really? No, they're this is dynamic and vivid. I just told you vivid is crazy on the G4. Don't believe me. 
Um, it does things that you don't want to see colors go. It takes you to places you didn't think was possible in terms of reality. Uh, it's all twisted and, and everything is just going to look like a psychedelic painting from Mars. I don't know. Like, it's just weird. This is a weird mode. It looks weird. But people like it. I'm not trying to shame people that like it. You guys like it? Cool. Um, but you got to admit, G4 is a little out there on their vivid mode. A little bit. A little bit out there. Oh, yeah. I'll try that. I'll try that FOMO. We'll try to see what the AI does. Um, since we are kind of just like letting the TV run wild, I'll, I'll allow it. I think actually it might be on, to be honest with you. It might be on. It might be on for this mode because I do keep it on for this mode. Yep, it's on. Uh, does it make a difference? Uh, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> maybe. It's on, though. It's on always for vivid mode for me. <sighs> oh, what, what is the Samsung doing? It's just, like I said, it's not as bright as the G4. In vivid mode. We'll go to gaming in a second. Oh, my bad. Sorry. Yeah, it looks so much different. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I don't blame you for thinking it was in a different mode. <laughs> I have my composure, or sorry, I have my exposure compensation um, set to minus two so it's kind of trying its best to be on the lowest exposure possible so you can see everything that's going on i can't wait to see the bravia 9 in vivid hey that, was, that would be pretty interesting You guys like Vivid Mode? You're going to love the G4. Link is in the description, by the way. Uh, if you guys are buying either of these TVs, you could support the channel uh, by buying your next TV on one of my affiliate links. I would greatly appreciate that. And uh, I can't thank you enough for doing that. All right, let's, uh, let's, let's get to gaming. Let's get to gaming. Let's put these in game mode. Um... All right, let's see. I'll go to game mode here. Oh God, I don't know. I don't know where it's gonna put put me in for game mode uh, in regards to uh, showing this content. One sec. We're going to start with uh, off on dynamic tone mapping on what's up, what's up the Elden Ring. Um, it, don't pay attention to the brightness. I have not changed anything yet. So um, actually, sorry for, for green flash banging you there. I gotta set all these up. I have to set it up. I don't think it's set up yet. Because right now, we're probably like in like... Modes that I dare not travel to. Um, I know how to bring up the menu. Uh, I'm going to new more settings. Game picks. Uh, let's go basic. All right, uh, let's fix this. We're going to start with off for now, and then we'll we'll put it on. And I'll fix the camera. Don't worry. It's not that dim. I just had to allow. I just had to allow it. To get that dim. To show vivid mode. All right. All right. 
Let's go to a different area. Okay. Mm, mm, where am I at? Let's go to that red place. Oh god, I think it's over here. Cathedral. Do you want the other TVs on again? Or do you want to keep them off? Your call. Um, yeah, I guess um, this game is old by now. If you guys haven't seen this, I'm sorry. Uh, so let's see the red sky. I love the way it looks on the S. Oh, God. Why are you attacking me? What are you? What are what are you? And why are you here? Okay. Banish night shield. All right. So let's look at the sky. I love the way it looks on the S ninety five D. By the way, it does look really good. Uh, it looks great on both though. Um, but I think this is the. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is the area that I was in the other day, right? I believe so. So the Erd tree, not the Erd tree, sorry, the mini Erd tree, whatever, just the tree, I guess, looks brighter on the G4. That pops out. Um, the sky looks, I, I prefer the sky on the S95D. I really love the way that red looks. Much rather have them all on, keep S90D on. All of them on? Okay. I did it. I did the thing where one TV turns off and the other one says no, sir. Uh, I want to turn off too. Um, so. Okay, finally. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. You have two different brands. Uh, thankfully, they don't control each, like, with the same remote. <sighs> Game mode. Let me go ahead and make sure this matches. And don't worry, we'll try other modes. All right, that's all the good, all good. Uh, and then ADL, right? Okay. ADL on, yeah, 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 okay. I guess I could always turn it off later. There's a vivid game mode? Uh, yeah, kind of in a way, there's a vivid game mode. Um. If you turn off the game HDR and stuff, you can make a vivid game mode. Uh, I'll show you. Um, I don't know if that was a question to me or if that was just asking somebody else that was talking about it. And so that's in game mode. You guys want to see my game mode settings? Um, it might not be. I don't know. Here, let's go to brightness preferred because I do think that makes uh, the AADL the brightest on there. I like brightness preferred. I like live color on medium. I won't mess with this though because like, I don't want you guys to be like, oh, hey, he manipulated the ADL. <laughs> So let's 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 change the tone map. And that's it. Um, everything else is gonna be pretty equal there. I love the way that the AADL looks in game mode. I've said it before. I'll say it again. This is not a bright game. This is not a bright game. I believe it caps out close to a thousand nits. Not a bright game. So, uh, right now we're just looking at how this game does. On all the TVs. I will go to a different mode, uh, a different different side of the map, I should say. I love showing Elden Ring though, despite it not being the most like 
capable game because it just shows a wide range of different environments. You get to see what, what everything looks like. Again, the G4, you know, will push a little bit of green in the sky. Uh, it looks a little bit blue today in the sky, actually. So uh, I'm thinking my color tone is off. So let me let me make sure we are in warm on that, because that that could be that actually could be what's wrong. Because uh, it does look a little bit blue. Looks a little bit blue. Let me fix that. Ah, yes, we are in the wrong one. All right, so that's why it was looking a little off to me. Um, yeah, it is a little bit pushing the green uh, uh, in the sky. Not as bad as the G3. The G3 was really bad at painting scenes uh, green. When are you going to get the C4? I, I hope pretty soon, honestly. I'm I'm working on it. I'm trying to sell the QN85D right now, so I think I got a buyer, but we'll see. We'll go to other games, don't worry. Um, I love this inside environment testing too. Kind of get to see who's doing uh that part the best. I will say this: there was an update on the S ninety D today. I don't know what it did, but um, I game mode looks a little bit better as far as shadows go. So. I don't know if it touched anything though. That's the problem. I don't want to assume or or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, I get to fight the Burger King guys for you. Um, that's what we did last time, and we'll do it again. I am going to put the dynamic tone mapping on now for you guys while we're still in Elden Ring. I'll do it this way. Uh, so let me go ahead and change that right now. Um, here, let's uh, let's give you a little bit of a better view. There you go. All right, so. Putting it on dynamic tone mapping. I didn't mean to do that. I don't think it matters. Um, so we go to advanced. That part I don't think matters. Um, contrast enhancers on high by default. We got to turn it off. Switch everything in to our preferred settings to match everything else. Auto, I don't, I don't, I don't know um, if that's correct or not, but I'm just trying to match these as close as possible. Sharpness, I think zero is the way to do it. Though, I don't blame you if you want a little bit more sharpness in game mode. If I want to try to match the sharpness, uh, I can try that, I, I guess. Let's see if uh, sharpness 10 is actually better. I mean, it really doesn't do too much. Let's just leave it at 10. Uh, let's go to the other one, set that up. Uh, I know how to do this. It's like this. Thank you for your patience, everybody. Um, I'll answer questions in a little bit.
So when you uh, actually switch your mode for the first time, everything like this is going to need to be changed. Otherwise, you will be stuck in a cool color temperature with contrast enhancer on high. Uh, and if you prefer that, then that's cool. But um, if you don't, then you're definitely going to want to change it. So um, the G4 is going to look over brightened in dynamic tone mapping on. So I'm just going to go ahead and just warn you on that one. Um, just just going to warn you on that one. It's going to look over brightened on that one. So it's this may not even be a fair comparison to do. But because the G4 is just going to look way brighter, but brighter than it should be for a game like this. Like I don't want my shadows that lifted, for example. And that's kind of always been my thing with gaming on dynamic tone mapping. I'm just not a big fan of it. This dude is whooping my butt. Like, yes, it's brighter. It looks... It catches your eye more, but you lose your shadows and stuff, right? So... That's why I actually would prefer, like, if I had to be forced to play with dynamic tone mapping on, I'm gaming on uh, active instead of the other one. That's just me personally. Uh, because, like, look at the shadows, and that's, it's a make or break thing for me. Like, I don't, I don't want my atmosphere ruined. You know what I mean? When I'm playing games. Especially a game like this. I'm a big fan of like Souls Likes and Elden Ring, for example. So I really just I care a lot about that presentation. And so dynamic tone mapping has always been a no go for me. Surprised I didn't cause fall damage. I'm trying to get to a little bit of a darker area. Um is this dark? I guess this is kind of dark. Like, look how much brighter the G4 is. I it shouldn't be that bright for this for this particular scene for this particular um title. But again, it comes down to preference. If you're somebody who's like, I can't see in dark anyway. I really want everything to be lifted. I don't want to be jump scared, things like that. Well, then I, I understand that too. So there's no wrong answer. It's all about what you like. I think this is where I might get my butt kicked, to be honest with you. As I am... Running out of time. I really wanted to see the the torch here. It's just everything is lifted. All right, let's go to a oh my god, a different game. Let me kill this thing first and then quit properly, so I don't lose my progress. Quit game. All right. Let's go to a different game. Ori, for example. Ori with dynamic tone mapping on might be... I don't know. You can make an argument for it. I suppose. Because it doesn't lift that much. You're not really seeing shadows that bad. Or is a tough game to show on camera. Um, let's go to Jedi. I accidentally put the S95D in ALLM, so that's why it's going to switch in and out of game mode. I should not have done that. 
Uh, but again, this is a kind of a darker environment here, and you can see just how lifted it is. This game blinks, by the way. I don't know. Makes my camera blink. This is not the TVs blinking. Do not think that the TVs are blinking. Um, it is not this game just for whatever reason. Low, low uh, shadows, things like that. It's causing my TV to just go haywire. Or sorry, my camera to go haywire. Don't fall. So, yeah, that's kind of my issue with the dynamic tone mapping. This is another dark game. Let me know what you guys want to see. Um, I'll kind of like take requests and answer questions at this point in time while we wrap this stream up. If you guys have questions, one of the best ways to ask your question is going to be with the super chat. That is appreciated if you do so, though it is not required. I'll try to answer your question no matter what. Um, so if there's any last second questions, you know, now is the time to do it. Or if you have uh, something you want to see, again, this is a darker title look at what the g4 on dynamic tone mapping on does this is what the c4 would do as well uh it's just gonna lift like so that's the that's my problem so if you're talking about dynamic tone mapping i would say that the samsung does it in a better manner that said i'm still not a fan of either one uh i'm not a fan of either dynamic tone mapping method samsung does it in a way that they don't lift as much, but I also think that it's not nearly as impactful as it could be. If that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Like here, it looks fine, right? Is there ways to work around it? Yeah, I bet you could do some stuff with uh, lowering some of the, uh, what do you call it, things? <laughs> I'm not, I'm blanking right now, but you could you could probably fix it. Yep, sure. Um Let's go back to HGIG. So yeah, that's kind of the difference there. I'll keep it in dynamic tone mapping on. We'll go through uh, Forza real quick. Uh, KG, do you think LG coming out with a 83-inch OLED with MLA, will it be better than the S95D or A95L? Yeah, it'll be better for this reason alone. I mean, it might even be a better TV overall than those TVs, but like for this reason alone, there's not an 83-inch version of those TVs. So yeah, the G4 83-inch this year, I absolutely think that like that is LG's kind of trump card with the bigger sizes. There's not really any answer to that. So that's why Sony kind of has to bank on the Bravia 9 being a competitor in the 85 inch size because it is going to be cheaper than the G4 83 inch. So there's that. Um, what was I thinking? What was I doing? Okay, Forza. Yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Join late. Which TV is kicking butt <laughs> try not to cuss try not to cuss but um yeah um i would say it is definitely the g4 and the s95d g4 more so yeah more so it's a pg stream kind of i know my my nieces actually watch this stream 
So I just try to be really respectful. FOMO, good night. Have a good day. Everybody tune into FOMO's stream tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be a fun one. I always love the value electronic streams. I think they're always enjoyable. I always listen. I always like having Robert on and listening to him. It's going to be fun to see that as well. So yeah, I can't wait to watch. I'll be in chat. All right, so here's the portion of the stream where I drive backwards and you guys make fun of me. Um, so let's hope hope it goes a little bit better than before. Uh, I am going to be looking at chat again, though. So that's that. Let's try uh, morning. Got um, 165 people watching right now. You guys are awesome. I got 185 likes, so more likes than what people are watching. So that's a good sign. Uh, but for some reason, you didn't hit the like button yet. Um, if you could, that would help out a lot. Thank you. I'm actually surprised these do really well after the fact um, of being streaming. So you can't interact with me, but like, I guess people really do enjoy rewatching. And I'm trying to do a better job of timestamping everything. But my goodness, is that that is that is a task on its own. I promise you that. Um, so what we have to also point out um, when we are looking at these, you're going to lose detail on the Samsungs. Uh, less so. Less so on the S95D because it's more capable. So there's that. Um, I'm sorry. Now I'm actually not meaning to do this. <laughs> it looks like I'm I'm trying to do this, uh, but I'm not. I'm just trying to change the camera view. Okay. Uh, so this dynamic tone mapping on. And actually, this game doesn't do much with dynamic tone mapping. Again, I'm looking at the screen for the chat, and I crashed. So let's try, let's try not to crash. Um, I'm trying to give you a good good look at this game. I think this is probably why people think I suck at games, to be honest with you. Because I'm just absolutely horrible at this one. I'm supposed to hit the brakes right here. See, I know how to play. I just, I'm just bad. Like, <laughs> But there's other games I'm way better at. For example, Elden Ring. I used to be really good at Call of Duty, but I hate Call of Duty now. Like, I just can't stand Call of Duty. It just, I don't like what it changed into. Um, but man, Modern Warfare 2, like the original Modern Warfare 2, that was my game. And I was really good at that game. Counter-Strike, that was my game. I was really good at that game. But I still love games. Um, I really like the way the S95D looks right here. I'm very pleased with the S95D's image uh, as I'm looking at chat. DTM hurting the G4 details here. Yep. That's uh, something that it does. All right, let me swap these into um, their non- Dynamic tone mapping modes. I should just say HDIG. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. We always end on this game. I know it's weird, right? Um, so yeah, we want to go basic. Let's go to HGIG Honest. S95B is still sick. It is still sick. If you guys watched last stream, it was really doing good after I updated it. It's funny because it's like the update is actually pretty solid for gaming. It didn't do anything really to HDR modes for like movie. I didn't see any real difference there. It was really gaming. 
Gaming seemed to be like way better. Which I love. I love that. Anytime you can improve that, I'm happy. Oh, okay, so now we are in that mode. You can kind of see them all in their own light over there. You can see S90D is like blowing out the sun, some of the clouds. That's because the console is set to like 1500 nits, I believe. <laughs> S95B Slade. It did slay. It did really good. Surprised how good the G4 looks? It looks incredible. It looks amazing in game mode. I'm a big fan of it. Uh, HGIG is the way to go. Um, if you guys are wondering, uh, it's the way to go. However, there is going to be modes. There's going to be games that don't take advantage of the Xbox setup screen for your HDR calibration. And then HGIG might look a little lackluster to you. Um, and in that case, then you could try to do off with professional mode. And then tweak the settings a little bit to your liking. It's, it's not the easiest thing to do. Uh, but it's it's there. Uh, yep, I'm cutting across uh, looking at chat again. All right. Uh, I would like to go to Sea of Thieves. I think that would be a fun one to do. So let's do that. I'd love to see the G4 in Dolby Vision. If I did that, you, all the other TVs would turn off. <laughs> so, except for the AADO. And trust me, Dolby Vision gaming is nothing special. I believe the SDR mode is like in Vivid or something. Because we were just in the dynamic mode before we switched to gaming. That's why it looks like that when I switch into the m menus. I went back to basic on the S95D, right? I'm just going to double check. Shout out to my camera for being a champ and not overheating. Yeah, okay, we're in basic. When we've hit the three hour mark, guys, we're going to wrap soon. Don't worry. I don't know why I'm saying don't worry to you. It's not like you said go ahead and end it. Um, I think I was just talking to myself right there. I was like, yeah, don't worry. Don't worry. You will get food in a second. Uh, I think I might order some Chick-fil-A. It seems to be like something I do after streams is order Chick-fil-A. Unless you guys got some better suggestions than Chick-fil-A that I actually have near me. Everybody keeps talking about raising canes, chicken fingers. I don't have one of those, man. I don't have one of those. And I love chicken fingers, so I wish I could try raising canes. All right, let's go to the Monkey Island. All right, let's. Uh, oh, go Chinese. That sounds good. Yeah, that does sound good. Original COD on the PC is my all-time fave. It's what got me into PC building. Um, yeah, are you talking like that was a good time for me too? Uh, that is why I started playing, uh, Call of Duty. So, but I was playing Counter Strike way before that. I had to flex the ideal racing line real quick. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> I'm so bad at that game. All right. Uh 
Let me scroll up in chat, see if I missed anything while we set the sails. As we wind down the stream, we were winding down our sails. Does that work? Does that work as an analogy? I don't know. Um, yeah, DTM on the G4 will be good for a brighter room. I see why people use it. Like I was explaining, like when a game with HGIG turned on is just not going to perform as well because there's no support in the menu for your calibration. It's going to be some some kind of issues there for some people. They're going to think it's a little dim. There's no wrong or right answer to what modes you use. Which is why I don't have any problem showing vivid mode to people. Yeah, it um that's small. I'm sorry for you guys trying to read that, but uh yeah, the DTM uh dynamic tone mapping on is more eye catching for those that really just don't understand it and like if you don't have another TV around it, you might be like, "Oh, that's fine." Um cuz you don't realize what it's doing to the shadows around it cuz you don't have any comparison unless you've actually been in that area in a different mode, for example. KG, you're about to get smoked. I got smoked. If you're talking about in the racing game, yeah, I got destroyed. <laughs> um, still searching the seas. I don't know why it takes forever to find games uh, in this game. Oh, SDR Gaming. Yes, we will do that. Thank you for reminding me. Cowabunga. Everybody wants to see the turtles. Um, let's see if we can load the Masters. I want to try a golf game with dynamic tone mapping off as long as I don't have to update. Sometimes you have to update. Sometimes you got to update. All right, we're going to try golf since we're winding down anyway. If you leave during golf, you know, at least you saw the rest. But I will do SDR gaming in just a second. Want to see the Nintendo Switch, or should I just pop on the Ninja Turtles? Valhalla. Oh, That's a bright hole. Let's just do the first nine. They added Jack Nicholas. 99 overall. Okay. No excuses to be bad. I used to be really good at this game. I'm a low-key uh, golf video game fan. I kind of watched some of it. Like I watched the Masters. That was kind of fun. Uh, but I'm not like into every event. I'll watch it on occasions. I used to like golf a lot. Um, it's fun. Golf is fun. I gotta challenge Caleb to this game because apparently Caleb plays this game. So Caleb, if you're listening, I challenge you to this game. This is a fun game uh, to put on dynamic tone mapping on probably. Should we? <laughs> and I have to change the modes again? I guess we could. The legendary Jack Nicholas. I underswung that. Alright, let's see where we're at on chat. What's chat saying? AADL looks surprisingly good. Yeah, I love the way that AADL looks in this game. What's up, Marcus? How you doing, man? I you know I wanted to get no rest for the wicked and try that. I just didn't. I didn't know. I watched your review thingy on it. Um, your video on it. It looks kind of cool. I um, I'm not sure if I want to get into an ARPG right now, but like, 
Yeah, it would have been really cool to show on stream. Kind of regret not getting it, to be honest with you. I am under swinging again. That's okay, because I got Jack Nicholas, and apparently it doesn't matter if you underswing with him. He's just good. How does the G4 game mode compare with playing games on the G3 in Filmmaker mode? It's better because you're in game mode and you don't have any latency hit and you're not losing anything on the G4 when switching into Filmmaker mode, for example, like color wise. So there's no sense in being in a different mode uh, with the G4 because you're just when you go into game mode with the G4. It's like you were in any other mode. You really do not lose anything. Visually, I don't see a decrease. So there's that's the advantage over the G3 already. Uh, should you upgrade from the G3 to a G4? Oh, probably not. Probably not. Especially if you're okay with playing in filmmaker mode. Jumping up from one generation to the next is... Probably never worth it unless you're going upsides. Andrew, Dave's hot chicken is amazing. Um, <laughs> I had that when I was in Vegas for the first time. And I was like, they need to build one here. If they don't build it here, I won't be upset. Um, so I wish we had a Dave's Hot Chicken. We don't. We do not. Domino's. I haven't had Domino's in a while. I don't really feel like pizza. Domino's is like one of those things, though. At, whenever I order Domino's, it's always good, kind of, when it's fresh. It's so hit or miss, though, too, even when it's fresh. But when you try to warm it up, it's game over. It's not great. Like, I can't get a good Domino's to warm up. Mm -mm. Just does not. Does not compute. And Little Caesars is even worse. Like, I don't even know how people like Little Caesars, to be honest with you. Maybe I'm going to lose a couple of subs from saying that. Like, but Little Caesars is trash. I'm just going to go ahead. Maybe the Little Caesars by us is trash. Maybe that's just that, but... Yeah, I don't know what it is with Little Caesars. It's not it's not amazing. All right, let's go to uh SDR gaming before everybody leaves because I'm playing golf. I think I lost like 50 viewers playing golf. Um so there's that. Oh goodness. Uh let's fire up the Ninja Turtles. Uh, do not judge it yet. Um, <laughs> I do need to make sure everything is, is good to go for the game mode. Because I have never set up game mode just yet. So I'm going to set it up right now. Contrast enhancer cannot be on high. I will not allow it. Um, color tone can't be on standard. I won't allow it. I've got to change it for everything. It looks like everything is looking so cool right now. So let me do that. Let me do that. Also, I think I'm good on everything. Uh, we'll just max out brightness because we can. Um, we'll just keep everything default, whatever. I'm not recommending these settings. These aren't recommended settings. I just want to make sure we're not nerfing the TVs in any way. Don't screenshot the pictures right now. It's cheating. Contrast enhancer is off. Contrast at 38. Yep, got a contrast 38 this one too. Mmm, uh, you do lose some luminance though. Let's go 50. I don't care if it clips. You guys probably don't care if it clips. I'm just trying to like demonstrate like the maximum capability. Um so there's that. Peak brightness high. Mm -hmm. 
make luminance high. I'm just going through settings, make sure everything is correct. All that brightness, 100, since I'll get yelled at if it's not. Uh, contrast, 85, uh, whatever. Let's just bring it up to 100, because we did that with the other ones, right? I don't know. Auto dynamic contrast. I mean, it kind of adds something, but oh my god, it just like washes out. Uh, if we do that, then we have to put on Contrast Enhancer. Uh, is the brightness bad on the G4 for SDR gaming? No, nah, not really. It's actually pretty close to uh, what the S90D is. Um, and then when we go full screen white like this, it's still pretty bright. Oh, color temperature. And now I think we're matching. Now I think we're matching. Um, and I'll show you a little workaround too. Those of you that are, are new um, and want to know how to get it brighter, you can. I'll show you. S95D is uh, going to be the brightest in SDR gaming by a long shot. It'll be interesting to see um, if I can get the G4 to be the brightest after we switch a couple things. Uh, we got Super Chat from Hamza. Thank you for the Super Chat, Hamza. He says, uh, 77 inch S90C to 85 Bravia 9 for movies. Yeah, that's, that's going to be one where I would probably say we have to wait and see. I need to see like the Bravia 9 up against an OLED in my place. I've seen it. Um, and I think you wouldn't be disappointed with it. I will for sure like always take a bigger TV over um, everything. Like that would always be my priority. So I would lean early on just like having not seen it probably like in my own house, uh, in my own setup. I'd lean Bravia 9 85 inch for that question. But again, I need to see uh, to give you the real definitive answer. But I always, I always lean size. Whenever there's a size question like that, 77 versus 85, I'm, I'm usually going to pick the 85 uh, in most cases. Uh, sorry if you guys hear me button mashing. <laughs> I don't know if it's getting picked up or not. So thank you for the super chat, Hamza. Really do appreciate it. Uh, so that's, you know, um, the default SDR game mode, trying to max it out as possible, right? Um, and then we're not having contrast enhancer on. So it's not really the default game mode. It's default game mode kind of with tweaks, you know? Are the Samsungs in original game mode for SDR? Uh, yeah, good, good question. Classy. For the thanks for the text there, um, I don't th I don't believe they are. I don't know what they're in, to be honest with you. I think they're in original, standard. Okay, uh, but I did turn off the contrast enhancer. Um, so if I turn it into original, not much change there. Uh, so let's go ahead and change it here. Uh, good catch, classy. Thank you for the text. It's really um. So it's an original now. So now it's an original. But it not much changed, to be honest with you. The S95D is still um, going to be significantly brighter for SDR gaming uh, under these circumstances. And again, I will show you how to get the G4 brighter. 
Uh, but this is going to be the way, only way you can do this. Say, let's say you have the Nintendo Switch, for example, that doesn't support ALLM. So this is what you're limited to with the Nintendo Switch. So like, let's pretend this is the Nintendo Switch right now. Um, if you're worried about luminance, is the G4 bright enough? It absolutely is bright enough. Like you can so get away with it um, on there. So let's see what else uh, he said here. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and change the contrast as well on all the TVs. It is recommended you put it on 38 so you don't, like, clip, right? Uh, and I did want to go max brightness. I don't know. Original goes down, but... I personally would go max brightness. I get why you wouldn't, but... I'm trying to show off, like, the capability of the TVs, right? So I want to see if even if we adjust the contrast, will it still look brighter? So we got to go back down to 85 on this one. I mean, there's still going to be that difference, though. Even if we just kept this not on a hundred percent brightness and we had it at forty like it was just at, it'd be about the same. I mean, but like for the sake of I guess original mode, I'll go back to forty in a second. I guess it doesn't matter if they whoop my butt. Um yeah, so the brightness was at 40. Let's go ahead and put it back. It doesn't change that much, to be honest. 40 from 40 to 50, I didn't see a change, really. So, like, it still still looks good. Uh, but anyway, like I was explaining, if you have a Nintendo Switch, for example, this is what you're going to get as terms of, like, the SDR game brightness. G4 and the S90D actually look pretty similar. Which is actually a surprise because, you know, peak peak brightness is turned off on the G4 by default. And you can't change it. So for it to be that bright with peak brightness off by default, like, I think that's that's pretty impressive. And most people would be fine with the SDR gaming on the G4. So is it a concern? I, I don't think so. I, I don't even think I can, like, knock it for that. I, do I wish you could change it? Yes. Um, you still get that gripe from me. Um, and this will be a bigger problem on, say, the C-Series, for example. But let's say you do have something that supports ALLM. Well, then you can absolutely change the mode to, like, whatever you want. Say you like your personal Pixar mode or your Vivid mode or Standard or just Expert Bright. Um, then we have it. So this is on Expert Bright. Again, you have to have ALLM um, support for this. And it doesn't really add too much input lag. So there is that. Yeah, SDR looks good. I don't have any complaints. Um, and I think most people that get a G4 will like the SDR. And if they don't, like I said, you can use ALLM if your console supports it. G4 looks a little bit brighter when you are in um, this mode. And then, so there's that. Um, so I'm still here, <laughs> but uh, the camera said goodbye. Um, so there's that. <laughs> that did happen. We're going to wrap anyway soon, so I'm going to take these last second questions. Uh, let me look through chat and see what we got here. If you guys got questions, you know, leave them as I am about to wrap it up. I think I showed everything I wanted to see, mostly. We didn't get to movie scenes. I apologize for that. Um, but I do have to have those pause. It might be a video I do. I might have to be a video I do. Um... 
Let's see, any questions? I'm looking through chat, making sure I didn't miss anything uh, dedicated to me. Um, the super chat, I missed the super chat. I got you, Hamza. I said that. Um, I don't know if you heard it. Maybe you just stepped away for a second, or maybe I'm just reading an old message. Um, but yeah, let me reiterate the 77 S90C or well, to the Bravia 9. I would personally go with the Bravia 9 85 because we're talking about an 85 inch um, versus a 77. You know, you're going to lose your OLED contrast. So you will have that. It, it, it remains to be seen how much you lose when it is next to an OLED um, under the right circumstances. So I'll test that for sure. I have high hopes on the Bravia 9. I'm a little higher on the Bravia 9 probably than most people. Um, but we'll see. Um, like I said, I think the Bravia 9, call me crazy. This might be crazy for me, but I think the Bravia 9 has a chance to win the value electronic shootout. Like I think that's where we're trending with the Bravia 9. I really do think that if it's going to deliver on all of the promises and what I personally seen at CES, I think that as long as the panel's taking clear advantage of its strengths, and we're talking about peak brightness, things like that, then it could absolutely have a chance at the value electronic shootout. It would be my sleeper, to be honest. Like I said, I'm higher than it on most people. Um, and then we got another super chat from uh, Chin Mei. Thank you for the super chat. I don't know if there's a question involved in that, but uh, let me look. And we also have Cypher with a super chat. Thank you for your super chat. Um, Cypher says, super chat this, KG. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys' support. You guys are all amazing for that. Still about 13 minutes behind. That's good. Uh, so the camera didn't die yet. Um, but it, you know, it's to be fair to the camera, it's very hot in here. And I went about three hours. So the camera's a champ. Three hours, 30 minutes. Did really good today. So hot. It's so hot. I did open my blinds. We did do the test of the light test. Uh, so everybody who caught that, that was a fun time. Uh, you won't see that replicated. <laughs> you won't see anybody else wielding around a light uh, like a lightsaber. Well, you will, but not like a jousting stick, uh, like an actual house lamp. That's pretty, pretty unique, I think. But um, yeah. Great stream, dude. Thanks for battling through. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm a little sick sick right now. But I'm, you know, trying to get over that. But yeah, I did pretty good in terms of like my health. I didn't have to sneeze a bunch. We're good. Um, and I'll be fine. LG lost you because they decided to omit the ATSC 3.0. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting why they did that. I saw a couple of people did that. It's a, a trend. I guess it's just not well supported. There's a disagreement. I'm not sure. I'm just sure why that is happening. Thoughts on Sony investing in mini LED TVs. I love it. I love it because we are to the point where I think we've hit our maximum right now on OLED until next year. The reason why they probably didn't want to go to an A95 or whatever, a Bravia 10, whatever you want to call the next QD OLED. The reason why they didn't go with the third generation QD OLED, that's a reason I don't have for you. But if I had to guess, my guess is they just didn't see the best like generational gap. They probably didn't think that the TV that they released would be that much better than the A95L. And they have uh, the A95L still selling really well. It's in high demand in the 77 inch size. They're having trouble meeting demand in the 77 inch size. So there was really no reason for them to bring QD OLED again to the masses. So for them to want to invest into mini LEDs and really put all that effort from the mastering monitor into the Bravia 9, like that's really cool. I, I think the direction is good. I think the messaging is good. Um, I can't wait to like really see it next to an OLED because I, I think you guys are going to think it's better than most mini LED TVs because it is.
yeah, that's my bad. I should have, <laughs> I should have probably updated the text to not say DTM off game mode. I I did communicate it though. I just hope nobody screenshots. Whatever, it is what it is on that front. Uh, and then thank you for the super chat. Uh, Chinmay says first time buying an OLED LG G4 or S95D. Unless you are in like a super bright room, um, where you're gonna have a lot of daylight coming in, like you're in a sunroom, I would say I like the G4 a little bit better right now. Um, I'm surprised I'm saying that because I'm a big QD OLED fan, but I don't think that the MLA is too far off um, from a lot of scenes. There are scenes where the S95D does a better job with color brightness, for example. Of course, that's the strength, but if we're just talking about pure image quality, sharpness, clarity, depth, I'm getting more from the G4. And so just being 100% honest with you guys, I think I would lean G4 right now. Uh, if people want to buy an S95D though, that's not a bad purchase. And I would see why people would buy the S95D for a bright room. I seen that with my own eyes. So yeah, um, it really is going to come down to your preference, what you like. And you have to see the coding, I think, because it's not going to be for everybody in terms of that. But coding aside, let's just say the coding doesn't even factor in. Um, I, I still like the G4 a little bit better. I really do. I think it's more capable. And um, I love that they fixed the game mode. I, I don't have a ton of complaints with the G4. And I'm, at, I'm surprised that I like the G4 as much as I do. Right now, it's my TV of the year, personally. Um, but I still do want to test it some more against the S95D. So that was a good question. <laughs> thank you uh, for that, and thank you for the super chat. All right, let's see. Uh, keep going through some questions now. Um, based on what I have seen, the Bravia 9 looks good. Reviewers definitely need to put it through its paces and measurements. It'd be really interesting to see like everything that comes out with Bravia 9 in the next couple of weeks, months. I'm hoping to get hands on with it. Um, it is Jeff. It is it is one of the more intriguing TVs of the year, just like the G4 was one of the more intriguing TVs of the year. I saw it at CES and I was like, okay, this TV is ridiculous. Um, and I'm glad that I wasn't wrong on that. I'm glad that like the G4 lived up to my hype um, from what I saw and stuff. So, cause like even you guys can't see it cause the, the camera's off. I, I guess I could turn my camera on while I'm answering questions. It should be good now. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where it's it is even on camera um looking like even in SDR gaming certain things are sticking out more than other TVs. And at times I feel like it's like a placebo effect. I don't even know how to explain it. Um and right now keep in mind I am in uh this mode here let's so let's go back to the game optimizer mode and see if it sticks out still if it's related to luminance or not because now it's not the brightest tv but i still think it does stick out pretty good i don't know what it is about it Let's see. Let's look through some more questions. All right. So, is your live stream that convinced me to get the S95D over the G4 because of the gaming aspect? It just looks better on QD OLEDs to me. You know, I can see where you say that on like Elden Ring, for example, with the the red sky. Um, Color brightness is a big factor with gaming. And so gaming, 
you probably could give it a slight edge to the S95D, but I think everything else, just I give the edge to the G4. But I can see why people would love the S95D. There's also factors that the G4 don't have uh, or doesn't have, and that is um, like Game Motion Plus, for example. I love Game Motion Plus. Um, so like if it was a go-to TV that I'm always gaming on, I like Game Motion Plus a lot. It would be sad to lose it if the G4 ended up being my daily driver. Now, spoiler alert, no, I don't think any TV is going to end up being my daily driver. It's just not realistic. I review TVs mostly, not sit there and get to enjoy one awesome primary set uh, because that's just the way it is right now. Um, and I'll probably game on the, say, the AADL more than I will all the other TVs that I own. I love the game mode on the AADL. I think that Sony still has one of the best looking game modes and it, it still comes across to me even just playing SDR games right now. Oh, there's one thing about Sony uh, SDR. You can do some crazy things with it. Uh, not, necessar not necessarily recommended or anything, but um, I'll show you. This has kind of turned it into like me ranting a little bit. <laughs> It is what it is. My stream. I can say and do whatever I want. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Um, so you could actually do some crazy things like this. You can change the video signal. You can make it HDR. Do you want to? Probably not because it looks really bad. Uh, but you could. You could go to HLG and do it that way. Um, but if you'd say you wanted to play in this mode, yeah, you could. Um... Again, I don't recommend it, but you could do it. Uh, let's throw on... I think... I don't have that many SDR games. So let me finish answering questions and then we'll wrap. Because we went 3 hours 42 minutes. <laughs> G4 is a monster for streaming. Probably. Looks good. Looks good. At KG, last message. Oh, did I miss something? Um, need to double check. I'm looking forward to your A95L updates. Sony putting out 2024 features on it too. Um, yeah. Uh, so most of the 2024 features for the A95L were they should already have. <laughs> like the A95L is kind of the original one for that that chip. So, and all the improvements made for the chip, um, that UI, things like that, that's all from the A95L, I believe. Like, multi-view and stuff like that. But yeah, um, I know there was a couple features that they, they promised at, like, CES that would come later that still haven't come. Um, I could be wrong, but yeah. I don't know if they got that yet. And maybe that's what it is. We'll see. There's also some other 2024 features as well. Maybe. Uh, Alright. I'm caught up on questions. You guys have been really awesome. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you guys have any questions that I missed. Leave them in the comments below. Hit the like button on the way out. Be sure to subscribe. And the next TV that you buy, consider buying it on my affiliate links. I would appreciate that greatly. It helps out the channel so much. You guys have no idea. So thank you so much. Have a great day. Have a great west, rest of... Bleh, I can't talk. Have a great rest of your weekend. Uh, and yeah, take care. Thank you guys so much for watching. And have a great day.